If you think I want the life you choose to live, I don't think I want the love you've got to give. If you think my goals could be so trivial and small, then I don't think you know me at all. Peter Tork, I don't think you know me. It slapped. Slapped. It's so vom. <laughs> it's Bayworthy, that mm. song music. Mm. Monkeys slap. Hashtag yeet. Hashtag. <laughs> Sorry, we um we we were cheering ourselves up from all the terrible things in the world by reading the Mega Trainer press release before we (laughs) recorded. She really wants you to know that she's married to the kid from Spy Kids and and that uh, they're boinking. They're porking. Porking is much more likely. (laughs) Much more likely. Yeah, and then we had a realization. Well, technically, I had it that our friend Jay Fosgate does the uh, drawings for. Spider-Ham. Spider-Ham. I didn't even, didn't even because realize. Because of pork. <laughs> He's the other white meat. Mm. Mm. This has nothing to do with the podcast, No, by absolutely the way. nothing. The Nerdy 30s, the podcast that proves you don't have to give up what you love at any certain age. Welcome to the Nerdy 30s podcast, because you can do whatever and, and you can do, do whatever it you want at any at age. Any age, and I don't. We haven't done that in a while because we have a we, we have, have a, we um, have an intro. Bill Ratner. Bill Ratner. Bill Ratner uh, is our uh, is our friend, and he's awesome. He's amazing, and did our little opener for us. Thank you, Bill. But anyway. But anyway, but uh, today's episode is going to be about the attachments that we have to celebrities, mm. and this whole thing was brought on. By the loss of one of my favorite celebrities, Mr. Peter Tork. Yeah, it happened uh, when we were going to interview a friend. Yeah, about his art. We were getting ready to leave, and I was sitting in the kitchen just scrolling through Facebook, and then I was like, "Ah!" and then Aaron was like, watch, and I was like, don't look. (laughs) This is something that was deeply personal to you. It is extremely deeply personal for me. But, you know, I... uh, I sucked it up. My mom called me immediately afterwards after Travis told me, and I was like, oh, no. So It begins. And then everyone started tagging you on Facebook. Everyone. I had at least 15, 15 tags on Facebook of people just being like, hey, girl, um, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but Peter Tork passed away. And I was like, honey, I yeah, know. Um, they're not sorry. <laughs> no, they're not sorry. It's, it's one of those things where, like, you find out something and you're gleeful to tell somebody about it because right. you know that they'll, they'll care. Right. Even if it's bad news. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, I can't wait. Can't I wait. wasn't gleeful. I you was like, were oh. not. You were super, super disappointed to tell me about it because your face went, oh, God. Oh, God. I don't want to talk. Uh-uh. I don't know, but, like, you're going to hear about it. I know. And I would rather hear about it from you than just be by myself on the Internet and be like, what? Penal? Yeah. Yeah. Which I killed it together. Uh, when we got back from doing art stuff, then I was like, <laughs> yeah. Peter Talk. Yep. Yeah. It's like, I can't do any podcasts today. Yeah. Because I have to watch monkeys. Well, what was, well, no, that wasn't why we couldn't podcast. Well, that and. I got my, I got a permanent crown put in my mouth. You got a crown. Well, there's a lot of bad things. Then yeah. your cat was sick. And then... Yeah. Desmond has uh, intestinal lymphoma. My little kitty cat. Yeah. So it's uh, it has been one thing after the next for me, and it all started with Peter Tork. Like no, it started with that bad burrito I ate that morning. <sighs> started it all. That stupid burrito. But the point of the podcast is <laughs> the attachments that we have to these celebrities that we don't actually know. Well, I kind of knew Peter Tork. Yeah. I have talked to. I did an interview with him. And um, I had talked to him back and forth on Facebook a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was always very nice and very cordial. So, um, And we do have that linked on our Facebook page. Just go visit it, listen, and read. Um, that was my first interview that I ever did with anyone. So um, <clears throat> you can hear that I am extremely nervous but extremely excited. And I remain professional the whole time because that's what you do. Mm-hmm. So, yes. But, yeah. But there's actually um, a psycho a psychological term yeah. for people getting um, 
having an attachment to a celebrity. It's called parasocial uh, relationships. relationships. Uh-huh. And what it means <clears throat> is is that you put in all this time and effort and emotional help in this relationship, but you get nothing back because you yeah. don't actually know them. Because they don't know you. Yeah, they have no idea that you are alive. Um, Which is kind of sad, but, like, I mean, it's the truth. Like, yeah. Uh, but what's interesting is it's actually, when you read about all the studies that they have done on parasocial, it's actually not sad. Um, parasocial relationships actually give you a lot in your life. Like, if you're lonely, you can turn on the TV and... Somebody will be there to talk to you. Yeah. If you're ups- if you're mad about something, you see them talk about how mad they are, and you're like, yes, they're mad too. Mm-hmm. Finally, somebody else understands where I'm coming from. You know, like the- they become your friends. You it know, does, yeah. Especially with like if it's something like a TV show or like music or something like that that you like touches you on a deep level. Right. Like it becomes like it almost it does become like the, they're your friends. Yeah. Like all of my favorite TV shows, I feel like I'm friends with these people. Right. But like I mean I know that like I'm not like right. I'm not going to like go to their house and be like hey guys. <laughs> How you doing? There there are some yeah. people that take it too far. There are people that and take it too far. We're going to do a podcast on that, but not in this episode. Well, I mean, you know, we, we can touch on it in this episode because yeah. there are situations it, hand, it goes hand in hand where like some people get so invested in the relationship they believe it's real. Right. Um and like I mean, then you get situations with like um, uh, that YouTuber Christina Grimmie, where mm-hmm. like she had a fan that was just like I think he was like in love with her or something, right. and he killed her and himself right. at her concert. Yeah, and that's um, that's not okay, guys. Yeah, you just gotta keep yourself in check. Yeah, and what's interesting is I was whenever we I was preparing for this podcast, I I sat down and I was like, I bet some of our listeners have this sort of relationship with us. Mm-hmm. And that's completely fine. We're um, totally not celebrities. We're like, not celebrities. But I'm single too, so like if you're cute and like you want to have like a real like non parasocial relationship, it's like <laughs> say, <"Whoa."> hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly boys, sometimes girls. <laughs> sometimes it takes a very like particular. I don't know if it's was particular. it Blake Lively? Is that who you were like? Ugh, about? Blake Lively's cute, but like I think she'd be insufferable. Mm. I feel like she's like a uh, like diet Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like I like to bake cupcakes they, and diamond dust. They do have a similar shtick to each other. They yeah, really I think do. she actually just started like her own little newsletter, like Goop. <laughs> oh no! Did she come out with a line of sex toys? I don't know, but she probably. Well, I mean, she's married to Ryan Reynolds. You know, he'd be. Up Blake for Lively's it. married to Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. I had no idea. Speaking of which, like, I want to see Detective Pikachu. Have you seen the trailers for it? I have not. But oh it, my god, I have seen pictures, and he's wearing glasses. It's so amazing. <laughs> it is exactly the kind of silly weirdo humor that you would be into. We're gonna watch the trailer after the podcast. I would. I would love to. <laughs> I will be delighted. I will be delighted. But um, but like the parasocial uh relationships it was actually they didn't know what to call it it started in the 1950s whenever television started like popping up and the psychologist i can't remember what their names are um starts with an m maury povich oh i'm i was thinking of morton like the the medicine but it's horton horton and the elephant horton and wool actually coined this term um and they actually believed that it was some sort of um, like disorder yeah. that people would get. Uh, but since then, multiple scientists and psychologists have come together and been like, no, this is actually very common and very normal mm-hmm. for you to have an attachment on someone that you don't know. Um, what's, what's neat about it, and I think this is what actually causes you to kind of latch on, is because you see their emotional sides and there's that little piece in you that's like, I'm feeling that same emotion while you're saying it or while you're singing it. And so it gives you a shared experience. And your brain will actually have that become a real life situation. Yeah. So it's kind of like if you're watching television and you see someone get their hand cut immediately, you are going to cringe because you know what it feels like to get your hand cut. Oh, I don't. Or but you like, will visualize <laughs> it in your head of what it's like to get see, your hand cut. See, we've had this conversation before where you where you do that with, like, horror movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. I do it when it's, like, you know, like a, a teen comedy or something, and, like, an embarrassing thing happens. I'm just like, ah! No, I and do then, like, that, too. I change the channel. Like, I, I can't even too. watch it. I 
do that too. It's like, because uh, I've been that weirdo kid. Like I know. No, I com- I completely know. Anytime that I'm watching like a girl that is socially awkward that has a crush on someone that she won't talk to, and she like completely boofs all the time. <laughs> In front of that person. Every time that I see that, I'm like, oh, God, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, you just was... turned into, like, your junior high self. Yeah. That was a bad time. Yeah. I was reminiscing about that earlier today. I was like, my hair was so crunchy. I had hair. And mm-hmm. it was, like, full of, like, half a bottle of L.A. look. I remember this. And it was. Mm. Uh, it smells good. It did not smell good. <laughs> Wait, was that not the one that smelled good? You put one in I your mean, hair it did, good. but like it was, it was, it, it was smelled, very pungent. It smelled like um, hand sanitizer. Yeah, yeah. Like very strong. And then I had like the peroxide blonde tips. Yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> Don't feel bad. Abercrombie shirt that was like two sizes too small, but I was like, I was going to wear this. And you're like, I'm rocking it. And you did. You rocked it. Yeah. I was like, I have my hair down past my butt. Oh. And I bleached the front parts of my hair, and then the rest of it was brown. Yeah, I remember. So, there's that. Honestly, like, you haven't changed terribly much, though. Like, no, I haven't. Visually, your hair I have shorter. Not. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit shorter. I went through the periods of having, like, pixie cuts and, and all that, but it never really lasted. Because Everybody needs a, like a dramatic, oh, like yeah. Winona Ryder. Oh yeah, like it did not look good on me. By the way, it made me. Have it a, looks fine. I had a big head. I've got an Irish head, and I'm completely aware well, I, of it. I think you kind of fell into the <laughs> uh, the the early 2000s trap of getting like the Kate Gosselin haircut for half a second. Where no, it was just I like, didn't. I didn't go in. That did you one. not like feather it no, up in the back? No, we that had was, so many friends. We had so many friends that, that did, that. did that. I just went for the pixie. I oh. didn't go for the. I didn't go for that. No, I didn't yeah. like it. I thought it looked gross. I'm sorry, everyone. It that did, happened. and it still does. And like honestly, like early 2000s fashions, I think are the worst out of all fashion. Oh, they are. <laughs> I was thinking definitely about this earlier. Trend. I was just like, you know what? If I'm watching a porn and I see like frosted tips in a puka shell necklace, I immediately lose my erection. <laughs> It's like, just, it's bad. Yeah. It was bad all around. There was a lot of plastic people were wearing. A lot of plastic. Plastic clothing. A I lot had of some. bad. Pleather, like, plastic. Raccoon hair. A lot of shiny things. A lot or of like, shiny. Or do you remember like, um, like, like the, I don't slut shame, but like the slutty hippie like look, like where it's like a belly shirt, but oh, like yeah. bell. I'm um, going to tell you something uh, that has come back. That has come back. And the in handkerchief force. for a belt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that has come back full force. It didn't look good. It was just the way it was styled. Yeah. I feel like it was styled differently. This is way off topic. So anyway, parasocial relationships. I liked it, though. <laughs> I liked it. It it brought me to happy places. But um, but I don't know. I just I feel like the, the reason for parasocial relationships is because there's there's a universal thing that happens with every human mm-hmm. and it's feelings. Yeah, that's it. And it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what religion you are going to have feelings and you can emotionally, you are going to connect with other people mm-hmm. and you are visually seeing these people or audibly hearing these people. So automatically you are going to be feeling what they're feeling. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's all a bunch of shared experiences that you have with these people that you don't actually know. So it makes you, it makes you feel like you know them because yeah. if they write music, that's very personal you know, I mean, it's gotten especially uh, like I don't want to say worse, but like you know, um, more more prevalent, more mm-hmm. intense in recent years because of the rise of uh, social internet, media. social mm-hmm. media, internet celebrities like on YouTube or podcasters, podcasters. <laughs> because like you know, it's more conversational. It's more yeah. like this is my day to le- day life. Like you're letting people in to like your actual life. It's mm-hmm. different than like you know, a singer or, like, somebody that's an actor, like, they're pretending to be a role. Right. Or, like, if they're singing, maybe they didn't write the song. It's just, like, they're just singing a thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, when you're vlogging or talking on a podcast or something, like, it's just, like, you're just talking your experiences, and that makes people feel closer to you. Yeah. Because it's more conversational. Absolutely. And uh, that's been something that's really been talked about when it comes to parasocial relationships within the Um, last couple years oh absolutely and a lot of the psychologists are now saying that it's very very healthy to have these because not only will it 
give you a sense of identity for yourself because you're going to pay attention to the people that remind you of yourself on some level. So it's going to help you build your identity as well as give you an understanding of someone else's life. So it's going to help you gain empathy to people that you don't know. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of good things that come from parasocial relationships. And there's some bad things like people becoming stalkers or or um, people becoming recluse where they don't want to actually be out in the real world because of the potential that they are going to do them harm. So that's mm-hmm. when people get agoraphobic and they stay at home and they watch TV a lot. Um, but this, you know, parasocial is a way that you can have relationships with people without judgment Without, you know, you having to do anything. It's kind of like a little therapy session. Yeah. You know? Uh, and plus, like, I mean, it gives you a chance to explore things about yourself. Mm-hmm. That you're not necessarily comfortable talking with real world people about. Absolutely. Um, I mean, like, within. Yes. But, like, you know, there's, like, if there's something that you're feeling that you're not sure is the norm. Like, there's usually somebody out there that's talking about it. Exactly. So it gives you a chance to kind of, like, do research on it. Yeah, and it gives you a chance to not feel alone, you know, because I feel like the human experience is actually a very lonely thing. It is. And that's why we've created art and media and stuff to kind of relate to one another. So um, I personally think it's healthy. Just don't take it too far, you know. Um, It's kind of like your relationship with your pets, Mm -hmm. you know. But you can – your pets are there. You can touch your pets. You can hug your pets. But they give you that emotional support that you need without asking for... Actually, even celebrities ask for even less in return. Yeah. If you think about it, because you still need to feed and water and change your pet's doopy doo if it's a kitty cat, Mm -hmm. you know? But with a celebrity, you don't even have to do that. Yeah. You know? You're just, like, waiting for their next art piece. (laughs) You said something a while ago that made me think of something amusing. You Mm. said um, uh, that it allows you to you different viewpoints of life that you've not seen before yeah. that you're not used to um which makes me think of uh RuPaul's Drag Race which yeah. uh a lot of people didn't really understand you know the the world of of gays or drag queens right. before and now it's such like a a huge phenomenon yeah. uh my mom watches RuPaul's Drag Race that now. is amazing she's always like Travis when does RuPaul come on <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like a with Thursdays or Fridays. Yeah, too. well, this is why representation's important. Because, yeah. like, before, people would make up stories in their head what it would people be like to be a drag queen. People were just, like, scary freak clowns. Right. And they are. But... <laughs> but they're loving. <laughs> they're loving scary clowns. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, they're people. Like, they're just people with an art form that they're expressing just like any other artist. Exactly. Know? Exactly. That's why... Oh, please don't step on that, Bernie. There you go. That's why representation is so important because I was like, Travis and I were talking about this the other day. We, when we were little, we had television shows that, you know, had people of color in it growing up, like childhood shows like Gullah Gullah Island, the Power Rangers. Rainbow, Power Rangers, all of these things had diverse groups of people in it. And the fact that we grew up seeing them on television made us have an appreciation for their culture, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, it made us more open to different types of people. Please, please, please make television even more diverse. We need it. We need it. Yeah. Absolutely. Please get down, Bernie. Love you. We have a cat terrorizing the podcast. Yeah, I got him down, and he was completely distracting me when I was just talking, and I had something very important to say, but he destroyed (laughs) it. He destroyed it. I don't know if I got my point across correctly or not, but please we'll see. represent people. You know, it's important because it it uh, it bridges the gaps. Yeah, I would actually I, we do need to, to work on uh, representation a lot more because like we do see things mm-hmm. more than we used to now. Right. But I feel like uh, it's still very limited. Like, yes. Uh, from my own experience, gay characters, they're usually just they're still kind of just side characters Mm -hmm. they're ancillary characters and if the movie or tv show or whatever is about the gay characters it's usually sad yep or it's about like um 
coming out or right. AIDS or something mm -hmm. like Forbidden Love. I don't care anymore. I've seen that movie a hundred times. Right. I want to see a stupid, shitty action movie with boys making out and shooting zombies. Oh, it'll happen and I can't wait. I, yeah, I, I don't give a shit if it's an Oscar bait movie. I just want like stupid movies with gay people. I agree. Because that's the norm. That would be like, we don't have to have every movie be like just amazing. We, we can have our shitty B movies mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And I would like to see more of those. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Um, one of the things that I would also like to see is mixed races being yeah. uh, presented. Because I have a lot of mixed friends. And yeah, I have several mixed family members. And they're, I'm not going to name anybody, but they grew up not knowing how to present themselves. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to, here's the thing, is no one has to present themselves any way other than being themselves. You know, no matter what television tells you you should be, no matter what someone else tells you you should be, it doesn't matter. You know, you got to be your individualness. But being able to see someone on the television that represents you is so important. And it makes you feel like, you matter, you know, like people yeah. are going to love that character and they're going to love you. Yeah. And it does, it does help people understand it better. Mm -hmm. Um, because I mean, like my family, like, I mean, they, my family's always been open, right. but like when I, before I came out, like they were just kind of like, you know, oh, gay people are all right, I guess. But like right. now they're just like, they had the fully, flags, <laughs> like in my corner, like waving flags and stuff. Yeah. So like all it takes is for somebody to educate people. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of a lot of that comes from just not understanding. Yeah. And if they saw it on television where you feel safe enough to be able to experience things and have a paros parasocial relationship with these characters, you know, you're not going to be as weird in person. So mm -hmm. there you go. Because you are not weird. We're all just humans. Woohoo! We're all weird. We're I'm, all weird. I, to be honest, I only like weird people. I do too. Like, I just can't <laughs> stand it when people try too hard to be quote unquote normal. Cool. Where they're just like, oh, look at, I'm just hanging out with my mm -hmm. friends Sheila and Julie and we're drinking wine. Look at our engagement rings. <laughs> I am a professional mommy. Um, or is that weird to you? It's weird to me. There you go. But like, there's but somebody see, that's gonna buy that bag. Yeah, though. but see, like that's 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 like that's the mainstream like popular culture mm -hmm. thing that I've seen everywhere. Right, and that is weird to me. That's alien to me, and I've seen it everywhere, and right. I still don't understand it. And that's why so. you need to be represented. <laughs> yeah, because that is foreign to you. Like watching these women drink wine and be perfect mommy. That's yeah. foreign. And by the way, there's no perfect mommy. Stop stressing yourself out so much. Right, for reals. But um, but. You know, some of the celebrities that Travis and I kind of attach to, you know, oh, something interesting that I kind of wanted to bring up about parasocial. Uh, oh, you heard it. <laughs> I heard it. Uh, but something interesting about parasocial that I, I always thought was interesting um, is that when a television show goes off the air, you actually have breakup feelings about it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Or like uh, when they write one of your favorite characters off a show, mm -hmm. and you're just like, oh, you grieve, you grieve. Oh, yeah, isn't that interesting? Oh my gosh, it's so interesting. And here's the thing: is like when one of your favorite characters dies off a show, and you see the other characters grieving for them, mm -hmm. it takes you to the place in your life where you grieved, and you grieve with them. Yeah. So it's helping you process your grief feelings. Isn't yeah. that neat? That's why whenever I wrote the the littlest astronaut, I wanted it to be about someone grieving. Yeah, like I don't, I don't have intense grieving feelings, but like whenever I do see those things, I do have like a little sniffle. I'm just like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. you're like, I get it, man. Oh, yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> I feel it. Oh man, the hardest one for me was uh, we've talked about it before. The body on Buffy. Yeah, that one every kills time. me because they make it so realistic. Mm -hmm. And they they did the cinematography in a way that kind of makes you feel it's how you feel when you're grieving because yeah. it, it things would be fuzzy or like you would feel and the there's, cinematography. There's no music. It's yeah. just all like weird static noises in the yeah. background. It's, because that is how you feel. Yes, when you either feel somebody dies so or something happens muted. like that. Yeah, like it's, you can almost hear that just buzzing inside your head uh -huh. while you're thinking. Yeah, about how your life is different. Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of wonder, 
if like because with Buffy it was her mom that passed away and I wonder if the cells inside of you that are pieces of your parent are kind of like oh that thing that I attach to is no longer around yeah so the cells inside of you are or mourning, and so therefore you mourn, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know? Episode. It was. Uh, I, I brought it up before, but, like, that episode usually just, like, it doesn't, like, upset me anymore. It mm-hmm. just kind of makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. But, like, the next episode where they have the Ugh. funeral, and then uh, and then uh, Dawn tries to bring her mom back. Yes. And then and then Buffy's like, you can't do that. <gasps> Ooh! Got chills. But then, but then, like she when she's yelling at Don, she's she starts crying and says, "Who's gonna take care of us now?" Yeah, that's the line that always makes me ball because, like, that's what I relate to. That's mm-hmm. like, you know, I am lost in my life as an adult. I don't know, yeah, how I would function without my family. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. That's the same here. Like, I'm not a well-adjusted adult by any means. And my parent, I moved into a house that's like five minutes from my parents' house. I don't know if that tells you anything about me. (laughs) But, you know, there's a certain level of safety when your parents are nearby. You know, like, they comfort you. They're, you know, they're your rock most of the time. And hopefully anybody that's listening to this, if you don't have any family, I hope that you have some friends that you consider family. Yeah. Because not everybody gets... To have a good family. Yeah. So, you know, you have... To, that, that's when you pick your family. Mm-hmm. You pick them out. Not blood-related, but you pick them. But, um, but it's just so interesting what parasocial relationships do and how important they are. And, like, they... I think it's interesting that they were trying to say that it didn't start until the 1950s, whenever oh. television was there, but that's not true by any means. Because they had, like, kings and queens and... And, like, gods and goddesses before that that were actually people, you yeah. know, that people praised and, like, bowed down to and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, you know, they didn't know them personally. No. I think it's the only reason that it's attributed to, like, the 50s is because, like, that's when mm-hmm. TV started. Yeah. And that's when we were able to freely see these people without even having to work for it. Because, like, even back then, like, with the kings and stuff, like, you would have to either actively seek out a way to read about them mm-hmm. or or visit their court or something like that. You'd have to do a lot more work than you do now. Right. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You'd have to wait until your scroll came with your <laughs> with your handwritten <laughs> news on <laughs> it. The, the bird flew in. <laughs> the, the pigeon sc- came. <laughs> with it ring, with it wrapped around his foot. <laughs> oh, goodness. But yeah, but I mean, parasocial stuff's been around forever. And I think it gives you a little glimpse. It gives you glimpses into what you can be or what you could be and how you should be. Mm-hmm. You know, because I mean, even if you're watching a villain and you like the villain, doesn't mean that you're going to go out and be a villain. It I just know. means you're like, oh, I probably shouldn't do what he's doing right now. But man, is he cool. <laughs> There's so much. I have so many feelings about that right mm-hmm. now. Because like we live in um, what it's called canceled culture. Yeah. Where like. People are always trying to, quote unquote, cancel people for something bad that they did. Mm-hmm. And they try to attribute it to even like fictional characters like like villains. And they're just like, this person did something racist or sexist. Yeah. And you shouldn't watch the whole show because this character did it. And it's like, they're the bad guy. Right. That's the point. That's the point of them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's, it's insane. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And I mean, like in every single person's life, you've done something crappy. Everybody yeah. has. Yeah. So get off the high horses, people. We all suck. Yeah. We do. It does. Um, there's a, a thing that people, there's like a black scholar that said this, and I can't remember who it was. Um, and it'll make some white people mad, but he basically said, all white people are racist. They have to educate themselves to not be. Mm-hmm. And that's true. Like, we are in an inherently racist society. We have to teach ourselves to not be shitty people. It's true. And, uh, like, there's a lot of behaviors I had to break to, and I'm still working on, but, like, you know, you just have to be aware in what to, how to act and how to fix it. It's the fact that you are working towards it. Yeah. You know? Um, hold on, I'm gonna wait till you're done getting that. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get a Tweezler. Gotta get that, there you go. Got it. He got the Tweezler, he's gonna chew it now. (laughs) Um, but yeah, but that, that kind of goes back into what you know, we I was talking about earlier how we had Gullah Gullah Island and the Reading Rainbow and all that. Yeah. You know, we 
got educated as a small child that, mm-hmm. hey, people of color aren't scary. You know, yeah. they're just like us. And I was for, like, I, I know that you have some family, too. And like, I was fortunate mm-hmm. enough to have mixed race yep. family. So, like, it was never really an issue for me. So. Right. Same here. Same here. And what's what's interesting to me is I'm somebody that's really into genealogy. And I like tracing back and, like, trying to figure out where my family came from and how I'm related to other people. And if you go back far enough, all of us are cousins at some point. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what race, what color. It doesn't matter any of that. We're all cousins at some point. So when you're out and about, just be like, oh, yeah, that's probably my five million times removed cousin right over there. So, so uh, her point is, um, it's okay to marry your cousin. Yeah, <laughs> just not as long as they're not first cousins or second cousins or third cousins <laughs> or fourth. You know, do what you want. Just don't tell me about it. Yeah, don't tell me. Don't tell me you're related. Actually, I dated a guy. I don't know. Did I tell you about this? No. What? I, I dated a guy, <laughs> and uh, I did not know. I had no idea. I just want to put that out there. Dated a dude. Didn't know he was related to my aunt. But married in aunt. Okay. But still, married in aunt had my cousin. So. Well, if it's by marriage, it's still. But still, I'm blood related to my cousin. So confused. I know. I, I got rid of it. Point is, she's <laughs> not with them anymore. Exactly. I was like, oops, nope, nope, nope. But yeah, uh, my friend, uh, um, well, Amy, Amy from the podcast. Uh, my friend Amy and I. I actually wish she could just recently started getting into genealogy and I brought her to the website that I use and we started like going back really far in our, our, our thing. I was showing her my stuff and she showed me hers and <laughs> we found out that we're French cousins. Like it's so cool. It's so cool. And, <laughs> and Amy, just, I, I just imagine you both wearing beret, berets yeah. and being like, le cousin. No. Oh, le croissants. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the thing. Like, Amy and I never would have put together that we were cousins, Mm -hmm. you know? Because, like, we, like, our heritages are very different. Or we thought they were. But apparently, no, they're not. So we're cousins, and you could be cousins, too. Travis, we're probably cousins. Probably. We're both pale and white. But Amy's half Filipino. Yeah. So the fact that we're cousins is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, because I mean, that just proves what I was saying. Like, we're all cousins, guys. Uh-huh. Just be friends. <laughs> just be nice to each other. We're nice. all family. We're the human race. Right. Right. Sorry. I'm... I love Jeannie. The back to parasocial <laughs> relationships. I love Jeannie. Well, that's why it's important, though. You know, like, I don't. It's important because you don't know these people and, you know, you get attached to them. Yeah. You know, it changes your viewpoints. So that's why that is a. Uh, Relevant to what we're mm. saying. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it gets to the point where we're so, like, we are so attached to the art that they make, and we're so attached to these people, that if they pass on, yes, we mourn them. Oh, absolutely. Which is my segue for you to talk about that stuff. Uh, okay. Well, all right. So, it's interesting, because, like, I know, like, with Peter Tork, Whenever Travis told me that he had passed on, like, it's one of those moments where, like, a little, like, you get punched in the gut. Yeah. And you kind of get this, like, nah, it's not true kind of thing. Because, I mean, again, it's the internet. Yeah, because we live in, like, the day and age where people are like, oh, it's going to be so funny if I write this article right. about the person that died. Which they keep trying to do with Henry Winkler. Please stop. They, I, love I know, Henry they're Winkler. like, Henry Winkler died and he was a Trump supporter who shoots people. And it's like, and no. I'm just like, well, no, none of that's really true. I don't know. I didn't really research all of it, but yeah. he's not dead. He's so. not dead, so I assume it's not true by oh. any means. But it's it's one of those things. And there's this part of me that's like, when they put these fake things out, do they put it in the universe to happen? I know. Like, do they get these things rolling somehow? Which is something we need to touch on because yes. we accidentally killed people. On yeah. The I mean, I don't think it's our fault. <laughs> we, yeah. But I feel like we're connected to the universe, so we start thinking about these celebrities before they pass away. Yeah. Because with Peter Tork. We were talking about him like a week or so yeah, before. Like two weeks before that, I sat down and I was thinking to myself how it was okay. If Peter Tork passed away, 
because mm-hmm. I got to talk to him and I got I actually got to know him a little yeah. bit. And I got to understand him as a person, not just as you know, Peter Tork of the Monkeys. I got to know I got to know him as Peter Torkelson. Yeah. His actual name. And the fact that I got to do that, I said to myself that it was okay. Because for some reason in my head, I thought of the fact that it was just Mike and Peter. I mean, Mike and Mickey going on tour together, which are other members of the Monkees, uh, Mickey Dolan's Mike Nesmith. They were just going on tour together, which Peter had been going on tour and he stopped. Mm-hmm. And in my gut, I it told me that I guess it was preparing me yeah. for the fact that, hey, he's probably not touring anymore because he's not doing well. Yeah. See, I think... That's, I mean, that's true. It's probably mm-hmm. your gut preparing yourself. Because, like, um, I think back when to when Stanley died a couple months ago. Yeah. And I'm just like, I was sad, mm-hmm. but I wasn't, like, heartbroken. Because right. it was like, you know, he was a very old man. And, like, it, it was one of those things where, like, he was getting up to that age where it's just like, it could be any moment. And, like, you kind of prepare yourself for yeah. it. Um, I don't want to say it and put it in the in the air, but... Don't you talk about her. Yeah. Don't you do it. You know it. No! I won't be as... I'll be sad, but I won't be heartbroken if it happens, because she's also at that age, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know who we're talking about. I don't. Even, we don't even have to name her. She's in her 90s, and she was a golden girl. Yeah, she's the last <laughs> she's one. She's the last one. Um, I... I love I'll feel the woman. same way as I did for San Lee's. Like, yeah. I'll be sad, and I'll probably, like, post a little thing about her. But, like, yeah. you know, like, my, my mind and body has prepared myself for yeah. it. And it's kind of the same way, like, when you have a family member that's, like, uh, suffering a long illness or they're getting mm-hmm. old. Like, you know it's going to happen. Yeah. It's just you. You can't hold on. It's like, it's like a. It's, it's out of your control. It's like you've already <laughs> pre-grieved before yes. they die. Yes. And so when it comes to their actual death, you can actually just do the business and, yeah. you know, take care of their funeral and whatever. Right. So, like, I think that's, you have a yeah. merit with that, your gut telling you that. She, I'm just going to say her name, well, but we, I'm we not know. saying it in the universe, so don't <laughs> listen to me, universe. They're going to be like, well, the nerdy 30 said it, so I'm going to check this box. You stop it, universe. But Miss Betty White, um, I absolutely adore her. She... Uh, she is one of my parasocial yeah. relationships, very much so. Um, when I was younger and I would come home from school, like having a bad day, I immediately would go home, lay on the couch. My cat punk would come and cuddle up beh- beside me spooning and I would watch the Golden Girls mm-hmm. and all of those little ladies, those little old ladies, they were all my grandmas. Yeah. Every single one of them was a grandma to me. And I cried when B. Arthur died. I cried when Estelle died. Estelle Getty. I cried when Rue McClanahan died. And I will, I know I will, I will cry yeah. when Betty White dies because I know she's old. She's in her 90s. She's had a great life. But I will still mourn the loss of that light that she had, you know? Let's pre plan a memoriam podcast for her. We should. Because it will happen. We'll do a sequel to the Golden Girls podcast and do, just kind of like. Do. Oh, you could you could do a slow version of oh, that. Oh, on my ukulele. Oh. oh, yeah, I could do it, but I absolutely adore that woman, and uh, she pen palled with me. Yeah, she did. I wrote to her, and she wrote back to me, and it was awesome. Yeah. She gave me pictures of like her her doggies and kitties, and it was awesome. Yeah. Like she's a cool lady. But she's like one of those people because like at least once a month she's trending on Twitter, yeah. and I'm just like, oh, this is it. I <laughs> know. This is it. <laughs> but, but it's, it's always, always just her doing something cool. It's always <laughs> Betty White is skydiving. Yeah. <laughs> that this is this is what we need to take from her. You can be in your nineties, but you can still be doing cool stuff. I That's know. what our podcast is all about. Right. Betty White is our podcast. Betty White is who I would love to be someday. Yes, one hundred percent. Strive to be Betty White because she went for her dreams. She's constantly learning new things and she's always up for it you know what i mean mm-hmm. like like she did that the that comedy show with like old people they they just like talk to her you want to go do a comedy show with old people where you know you sit down you make fun of stuff she was like absolutely i saw a meme the other day of her there's like this 
girl or this woman is so old that most of you weren't even bored when she was on a TV show about being old. It's true. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. But you know what? I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. But um, but I will mourn that that lovely little woman. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, he's another one of those. Just, mm-hmm. He's one of those that I'm just like, he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Who he's... was it that died recently that I was like, he? I thought he was already dead. It I don't was know somebody that was like that, like Dick Van Dyke. I'm not sure. But he's another one. Dang. Yeah, because yeah. I love me some Dick or Van like Dyke. Angela Lansbury. Oh no, not Angela! I know. Bed knobs and broomsticks was my childhood. It was and That's... murder she wrote, man. You know what? I didn't really like Mary, uh, what Mary Poppins. Yeah, I wasn't real. I wasn't a Mary Poppins kid. I was a big Bob's and Broomsticks kid. I was too. Yeah, that's why we get along. I right. <laughs> but dang, did I have a crush on Bert? Doesn't matter how much I, you know, I wasn't into Mary Poppins. I was still like, "Hello, Dick Van Dyke. Mm-hmm. Won't you do some dancing?" Da, 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 da. It's funny. I was watching uh, a video a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. It was British people uh, rate Americans doing British accents mm-hmm. in uh, movies, and they yeah. were like, uh, "It was like British celebrities, and right. like somebody like like they went around and they they asked them who's the worst uh, British accent from an American you've ever heard, and all of them collectively said Dick Van Dyke. It was not good. <laughs> it wasn't great, but it was still charming. Yeah. <laughs> I can still give him that. Oh, Mary Tyler Moore. When she passed away, I was very sad. Because, like, she was one of the... Who's the other one? I get her confused. Carol Burnett. I get her confused. Oh, she's still alive. I know. And she is funny. I always get them mixed up. Who says girls can't be funny? No one, because Carol Burnett, Mm -hmm. Lucille Ball, Mary Tyler Moore, Rhoda. I can't think of Rhoda's real name. I only watch female Penny Marshall! Oh, she died recently. I know she did. I loved Penny Marshall. Oh. I loved her. I loved Laverne and Shirley. Like, and then she was on Hocus Pocus. I know. Oh. Which, I know, uh, which I didn't know until recently that mm-hmm. her and Gary were brother and sister. I thought yeah. they actually were married. Really? Uh, so then, like, then, like, thinking back, I was like, oh, my God, they were married in Hocus Pocus. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I have done, I've done uh, short films, and one of the short films, two cousins were being married couples. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh. <laughs> that's gross. Weird. That's gross, but... All right. Fingers of a man named Clark. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Kathy Majimmy, man. That girl gets me. Ugh. That girl gets me. Yeah, I remember when I was little. This is just going to turn into a hocus pocus moment. I remember when I was little. Because we have a parasocial relationship with the movie and we're we like. We do. Uh, those old witches are our friends. Yes, they 100% are our friends. And you know what? I like them better than the other characters. Uh, also, oh, well, actually, like, you have a real friendship from I the movie. I do. I do have a real friendship from that movie. Jason Mars did. Uh, yeah. He plays Binks. Well, he plays the voice of Binks. Yeah. Um, he is my friend. He is my friend. And I'm uh, this next month going to be playing at his house for a show. And we're going to be doing Jim Henson stuff, which is another parasocial relationship of mine. Honestly, if I care enough about something, I have a parasocial relationship yes. with people involved. Oh, absolutely. That's why, like, um, like uh, you know, I'm such a fan of, we're, we're such fans of Buffy. We're talking about it all the yes. time. When all the stuff about Joss Whedon came out, I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh. But you have to separate. We did an entire podcast we on did. this. And we understand that there is a difference between the work that he does and what he wants to put out in the world yeah. and how he wants to change the world versus what he does in his own life. Plus, like, we were talking about this with uh, Mitch the other day. We were just like, hey, there's a lot of shitty people that make great art, mm-hmm. and if you stop enjoying every piece of art because the person did something bad, you'd have nothing left to enjoy. Absolutely. And uh, I, it's kind of a case-by-case basis. Mm-hmm. I guess it depends on how much it affects you. Like, right. I, personally, I don't know if I could ever se- take R. Kelly seriously oh, again. Oh, Never. Never. But, like, I mean, like, I can go back and watch the works of Joss Whedon because, like, honestly, the allegations against him is that he's just kind of a jerk to women. Yeah. Uh, which sucks. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that he gets better at not being a jerk. Well, here's the thing. With all... Yeah, I said it. But, uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, with all the stuff that's come out about Joss, I feel like he's probably going to be aware enough mm-hmm. to know... That hey, I need to adjust myself. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of people that aren't aware enough of their own 
issue to be able to do mm-hmm. it. Plus, people learning to grow, and it goes back to this whole cancel culture yeah. thing. We can't just keep constantly canceling We're people gonna cancel everyone because out. of things that they did 10, 15 mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. Uh, I like mean, the I'm guy sure that, that he did, did uh, things, but... Like the guy that did um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, the tweet he got fired for tweets that were from that 15 he, years ago that he no longer agrees with, and that he publicly apologized about. Yeah, and you know what? I'm sure that he has grown. I said some shitty things on social media ten years ago, and yeah. um, I sorry if you find them. Uh, but like, I am not that person anymore. Exactly. Um, but that guy is uh, going to direct Suicide Squad instead now. Yeah, the next one. Which, Hopefully right. he makes it better. Hopefully he does. <laughs> Because uh, he did a good job with Guardians. Yeah. I don't know. There's this part of me. Like, I watch... I see Jimmy Kimmel going out there and being like, I'm pro-women. And I'm like, Jimmy Kimmel, you are a dirtbag. Yeah, because he, kinda, I don't he comes off him. like, I don't like his face. Well, do you remember on his old show, The Man Show, where he would have women in bikinis I jumping on trampolines? I didn't even watch trampolines? it because it was one of those dude comedy shows yeah. that I refused to watch. He had women jumping on... You know, Pretty much nothing like, on trampolines. I don't for have fun. anything against like sexy things like that. Right. But like But the fact that he's coming slimy. out the fact that he's coming out and saying that he's pro women now just makes me feel like he's going with whatever society says to try and like gain notoriety yeah. for it. You know what I mean? I he just has one of those punchable faces. Oh yes he does. I don't condone it. But I just think that he has a punchable he does. face. He does. <laughs> I don't know. There are certain people. I mean, you have to use your own sort of best knowledge of someone to know whether they're a genuine person or not. And yeah. if they're actually improving themselves and trying to be better. I don't feel like he's one. So I don't like him. I get vibes from people. Mm-hmm. So like, I, do I don't too. feel the vibes from you, then I, I will avoid you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I am 100% the same way. Yeah. So, Yeah. And that's another good thing about parasocial. You don't actually have to be around them. <laughs> no. No, you don't have to. And, like, if you do meet them, sometimes they disappoint you. Oh, yeah. Which <laughs> we have a we have a situation like that. We don't know if we should talk about it. I listen, highly doubt that they listen. Listen, if you have followed our, <laughs> our career over the last yes. year or so, then you know what celebrities we have interacted with. Yep. Some of them turn out to be a little weird. Or aggressive. Or aggressively weird. Mm-hmm. Or s- scary. And not in a, like, a, oh, you are this person way. In a, I feel like they're going to hurt me way. Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the that's the uh, that's one of the downsides of the parasocial is because you associate that actor or actress with or like musician a with the character or persona that they put on. Yeah, like if they're a YouTuber or mm-hmm. a singer, like you associate them and you have your own like ideas about yeah. them because you don't see them. Yeah, when the camera's off, mm-hmm. so you just kind of make up this other persona. Yeah. And sometimes they're not that right. And what's interesting is the persona that you will make up for them will actually be a lot like you. Yeah. Like, you are going to put in little bits and pieces of yourself, like, oh, well, they did this that was like me, so that means that they're a lot like me. I'm going to tell you right now, I created an entire, like, romance with Tom Holland in my head. That is so hot. <laughs> tell me all about it. And just, like, just like you know, maybe in a couple years, like, when we're still doing cons, and, like, he's doing the con circuit, and, like, we just bump into each other, and he's like, oh, hi. And I'm like, oh, hi. And then we fall in love and, like, get married. I'm into it. Um, yeah. Can I? <laughs> but we share him as a boyfriend. We do. I'm pretty, sh- I'm pretty sure he's bisexual. I am. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he's Maybe at pan. Least I, don't, I don't know. There's there's something in there. He has some bottomy tendencies about him. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. Which I'm fine <laughs> with as well. Sit yeah. down. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Kimmy Schmidt? You're like, what's a bottom? You touching, tell me. T- touching butts. <laughs> She's like, tell me what it is. And he's like, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Kimmy gets everything wrong. <laughs> it, makes me, it makes me laugh so hard. Oh, dang. But yes, Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another part of the parasocial yeah. is you get romantic with some of them. 
Yeah, well, I mean, like, within reason. Because, like, I know mine's, like, a fantasy. Yeah. And if it comes through, cool. But, like, mostly probably won't. Right. But there are some people that, like, really go there. Yeah. Like, really, like, invest it. Like Write they... letters and yeah. send it. Like, oh, God. Do you remember, like, in the 90s? Sarah uh, McLaughlin? Well, I'm sure oh, she Oh, is this one. different? No, I'm going... Have you heard about the one with Bjork? No. Yeah, Bjork had... Like, this is a really famous thing. Like, so this guy was, like emailing her videotapes of him like doing crazy shit like pouring blood on himself and stuff uh because i mean like you know bjork's always like been like a crazy like singer or something yeah but like like she wouldn't respond to him so he killed himself on camera and sent the somehow got the video sent to her oh god oh god that's scary yeah that it, it, that actually does remind me of the Sarah McLaughlin thing. Mm. So, um, you know that song, And I will be the one mm-hmm. to hold you down, kiss you so hard. That was a letter written to her by a stalker. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Does he get writing credit? Uh, no. <laughs> he actually, that's funny you said that because he tried to sue her about it. Like, he was, that's my written word. And they did it in uh, Sarah McLaughlin's favor because they were like you're just crazy (laughs) he's like she was my girlfriend and she stole my writing and they were like i don't think you guys had a real relationship so we're like um nope i remember a few years ago sandra bullock had somebody like break into her house Mm -hmm. and she like like locked herself in her room with her kids and like called the cops yeah (laughs) because they were just like outside banging on her bedroom door did you hear that one about jodie foster did she go to her panic room? She sh- she should have. <laughs> I, th- I I might be remembering this wrong, but I remember hearing a story that so- she had said something against the president. I think it... I can't remember which president it was, but she had said something out against the whatever president was at the time, and they tried to kill the president. Oh, that was um, that was like in the seventies or eighties. Yeah, because that was a I forget his name. Was it Carter? Something. No. No, I think it was Reagan. It was Reagan. Yes. Uh, but I think it was a uh, something Oswald, something Lee Harvey Oswald. No, that was no, that was that's uh, JFK. JFK. Um, no, because like he's a character in Assassins. Yeah. That, that musical. Uh, because like he sings that one part. Because remember, um, Dustin and and. I'm not going to name them. <laughs> right. Some people did a song from Assassins in high school in our theater class. And, like, the uh, the guy part is sang by the guy who, like, he's singing to Jodie Foster. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, 100%. I can't, I can't remember what the guy's name is. I'm going to see if I can find it just really quick. I just remember because he was a little bit chubby. And, uh, like, uh, a couple years ago, they did a movie with Jared Leto. I'm going to type. And he just, like, gained some weight. Oh, for John Lennon? No. Yeah. It was in like it was another movie where he played this guy. Oh, he does a lot of movies like that. Then, are you sure he wasn't being Mark David Chapman? I don't know because he played Mark David Chapman in a movie where he just Unless gained a bunch of weight. Like it's just like the same type of guy. That was the guy that killed John Lennon. Mark David Chapman was uh, John Hinckley Jr. Yes, there Hinkley. is his name. He stalked Jodie Foster and tried to assassinate President Reagan because she didn't like him. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I don't know if I'm completely wrong, but I thought that he kidnapped her and tried to kill himself in front of her. But I I might be wrong, and it might be someone else that I'm thinking of. It feels like someone else. Attempted assassination, blah, blah, blah. Patient at St. Elizabeth's. Uh, Release. I think it's someone else. I don't. I don't know if that's. I don't think that's him. Oh man, that guy's creepy looking. Um, uh. Oh, he actually looks like uh, Mark David Chapman. Could like yeah, because they're both like kind of chubby and balding and with glasses. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have glasses. Well, he might not have them on here because I think this is his criminal photo. But yeah. he looks like Mark David Chapman. Mm-hmm. He does. Which is another parasocial relationship that went wrong. <laughs> if it's a boy band from the 60s and the 70s, Aaron has a parasocial relationship with them. You know I do. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. But yeah, and I, I, if there's anything creepy about their life, I will probably know it. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> oh, I hurt my ear because I, 
<laughs> I clapped my hand next to my ear. But yeah. Um, but Charles Manson is a well-known parasocial relationship with the Beatles. <laughs> it was the other guy that was being sung about in that song with the Hinkley. Yeah. Because it, it was Squeaky that was singing the, the girl part. Squeaky actually knew him. He just had her drugged up mm-hmm. and uh, prostituting her around, making her think that he loved her. Which, by the <laughs> way, here's another tangent. Have you seen, they're making a movie about Sharon Tate and like the, the Manson murders oh, no. starring Hilary Duff. What? As Sharon Tate. It looks so bad. <laughs> but like, but like I'm also. I'm envisioning Lizzie McGuire. Just well, being, of. just being Sharon Tate. Like she's trying to like be all like, a and her saying like Gordo. She's like a serious actress. Like she's being, but like also like they're adding like supernatural horror elements to it, to where like she's having visions of herself getting getting murdered by what? the Manson. Oh, that's that's actually accurate. Well, I know that she had dreams about it, did. but like they're like they're going full on, full like, on. She's straight up like, psychic. Oh, she's having, she's like having that so raven vision. Like, <laughs> it looks so, so terrible. It's like the the haunting of Sharon Tate or the murder, something like that. It's coming out in You April. know what's going to happen though is I'm going to watch it. We're going to watch. We should, we should watch commentary it and do the commentary. <laughs> Let's do it for the love of all that is holy. Yes. I watched the trailer and like it was just full on eye twitching for two minutes. I'm going to enjoy it. Because uh, I'm going to be like, Gordo. 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 Remember when Miranda hung herself on Buffy? Yeah, I do. I remember that. Like I was watching it and I was like, oh, hey, cool. Miranda. Lizzie McGuire. Awesome. And then I was like. <gasps> they had so many like little Disney uh, Disney Channel girls yeah. as the, the potentials. I like that anytime it's a little girl, we always want to say princess. <clears throat> did you want to say princess? Because I did want to say no, little Disney little princesses. Disney. I was trying to think of the word. I was going to say decom. Disney comedy. Com- comedians. I don't know. Alicia Day. <laughs> you have a special relationship with her. Anyway. Negative special she has a, relationship. Also, speaking of parasocial relationships, like, mm. let's talk about your negative parasocial relationships because you have the one with Felicia Day, but, like, also, you have the weird feelings about Megan Fox. I learned that we probably owe her an apology because she's kind of a cool mom. But that doesn't mean that she's not eating people. <laughs> Maybe she's eating people to be a cool mom. <laughs> Cause like she's uh, teaching her child how to eat, how to hunt. Because like, uh, like there were pictures of her. Like she has a couple of little boys. Mm-hmm. And there were pictures of her like going out on the town, and her boys were wearing dresses. Get it? And she was just like, you know what? It's not up to me what they wear. Like I'm just like allowing that. them to discover themselves. Like it's I'm not going to force things on them. I'm just like, oh, that's really nice. Now th- <clears throat> I'm going to say that I just don't like her acting. I don't know her personally. And I do feel like her skin is wet and rubbery. Um, and I feel like her mouth would smell. <laughs> it's because... And I'm not trying to be mean. I just... There's something in her aesthetically that makes me cringe. I know. But, like, Jennifer's Body is one of my favorite movies. It's <laughs> such a good horror movie. It's real. It's, it's real. It's a documentary. It is. They were just, like... Boy, it's a documentary follow, of Megan Fox's real life. you around for a little bit. It's and she had movie. boys. Oh, having boys kind of fixed her, didn't it? Yeah. She, is she going to eat them? No. Is that why she's letting them wear dresses? So she doesn't eat them? I don't know. She's disguised. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many questions. I just think it's, I think it's cool. And like, I, maybe she's not a great actress, but right. like, you know, I think she's a cool person probably. Yeah, she probably is a cool person. And I feel yeah. like if I met her and like... I'd be like, can I just touch your hand for a second? I just want to make sure you're not flying. Let me just make sure that you are a human and not a that's going to eat everyone. So, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I feel like there's just some sort of little predator that's in there that's just going to. Yeah, she has those, like, snake eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's a negative parasocial issue. <laughs> 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 I don't like her acting, therefore I put on her as a person a negative experience, which probably is not going to happen if I actually did meet her. Just putting that out there. Again, my parasocial, I'm still very aware that this is just a human that I have no idea yeah. about. Like, I don't know her. So um, I don't really have genuine negative feelings towards her, but I don't want to watch her movies. Because she scares me. Oh my god, but like Jennifer's body is the best. And... I've seen it, and I actually enjoyed that one because I thought it was authentic. 
<laughs> if we do commentary tracks, I want to do that one for Halloween. Oh, absolutely. I'll be like, yes! Yes, eat them! Eat the boys! Eat the boys! I'm not eating humans. Just I'm eating boys. Boys. Mm. That reminds me of Sarah on the Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Mm. It's a boy. It's a, a Can boy. I play with him? A boys. And she's chewing on that rat tail. Mm. That man's toes. Um, so we want to take a second here and talk about one of our sponsors, Infinite CBD. If you go to the Infinite CBD website, so infinitecbd.com, and type in Nerdy3010, you'll get a 10% discount on any of their products. The reason I love Infinite CBD is because it's made out of CBD isolate, which is the highest concentrates that you can get of CBD on the market through Infinite CBD. My back feels better. My anxiety's lessened. I feel so much better taking this stuff. Like, I'm not even kidding. They've got gummies. They've got oil. They've got pain cream. They've got uh, suppositories for, you know, butts and vaginas. They have CBD lubrication that is specifically made for people that have pain during intercourse. This will help you. Go to infinitecbd.com. And again, use Nerdy3010 for a 10% discount on all your stuff. Get on out there. But yeah, but Felicia Day is a whole nother. A whole what don't nother you bag. like about Felicia Day? Cause she's just. I know that you think that she thinks she's like actually like like just like the hottest dwarf in in the I, land. I feel like it is in her contract for any time that she's on a television show or a video game or something that her character has to be flattered by the male <laughs> characters on the show, because I have never ever watched a show with her in it that did not have her have a male character saying to her verbally, why, hello, you little redheaded vixen, or something like that, or, wow, what a hot. Did they do that on Supernatural? Yes. I think yes. They, they did have a whole episode Dean where... Dean wanted to boink her. They did have a whole episode where they went LARPing, and then all the girls were doing that to her. Yes, Dean wanted to boink her first, and then they had the LARPing episode. They were like... <laughs> Every single time All the she's... ladies were like, I want to... Do this elf lady. Exactly. Yeah. Every single thing I have seen. She didn't her do in. that on Buffy though. No, she it's did. She... Xander had her in his uh pillow fight thing. No, because he he had the, the, the Spanish girl and the other girl. I don't think she was in his dream. I'm pretty sure she was. But even then, like it wasn't if it was if she was it wasn't just her, it was like a group. Thing. But still, she's so in it. So it wasn't like, she's oh, in on it. we're going to organize this pillow orgy because Felicia Day is here. But I mean, then she was on um, Dragon Age and she w they actually gave her a role. And in the extra content where you get to play, the entire game stops for a cut scene mm -hmm. where this guy just goes, who's this hot elf that we have here? It's because of the guild. When she did that, that web series, The Guild. She had the whole music video where like, do you want to date my avatar? I'm just, I'm just going to be completely honest. Stop. <laughs> I don't like it. Honestly, she doesn't do that stuff much anymore because she just had a baby about a year or so ago, and now she's more like not doing a lot. She's just being a mother and like taking acting gigs here and there. But yeah, like, well, that that's fine. But I don't know. Maybe it's I don't. If it's in her contract, oh my gosh, that's annoying. If it's not in her contract, and that is what other people want to put in there. So that we think she's attractive, then I can't really ups be upset with her about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But man, is that that just gets under my skin? Like every single thing I have seen her in, that has happened, where everything stops just so someone can hit on her. And I, I have seen multiple shows with multiple actresses where that does not happen. Might be onto something because like she's a, uh, she's on that show Dollhouse. She's in like two episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, but like. The season finale of, of both seasons is like it takes place in the future, so she's just like a random character that kind of shows up, yeah, because uh, it's the end of the world, and mm -hmm. she's like, uh, as we know it, yeah, and she, <laughs> and she's, um, <laughs> you're welcome, and she's, uh, like she's a survivor, and like she's, she's discovering, she's not gonna give up, she, she's, she, you need to stop this, <laughs> not gonna stop this. I'm gonna stop but she's trying to like you know find other survivors and stuff and like you know she comes across a guy a couple guys and they're like oh oh, oh. oh. And she's like I'm a lesbian and That's, then the lesbian shows up and she's like the other girl a uh, girl doll lesbian shows up and she's like oh and she's like okay this is cool because I'm a lesbian uh huh 
100%. <laughs> I told you. Every single thing that she is ever in, she has to be some sort of sex kitten and someone has to talk about it. I mean, I think it's kind of cool, though, because, like, she's very average looking. Yeah. And she's not like like Megan Fox, like, oh, I have alluring snake eyes. No, like, I think she's scary. Like, she's she just looks like a normal chick in algebra class. Yeah. Somebody else that I'm like this with is Brad Pitt. It's not just females. I just want to put that out no, there. No, I understand. Brad Pitt drives me up the wall. Well, see, uh, the only time the only time Brad Pitt was like, oh, yes, for me was like in Fight Club. But that was because he was just mean and dirty yeah. in Fight Club. But like everything else is kind of like. Yeah. But like I think actually it's been proven like 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 that he doesn't shower. Yeah, it has. Like, I Neither think does Mitch. That's I'm what just going to put it out there. He doesn't shower. <laughs> I think tell that's you. one of the reasons like Angelina left him. She's like, you don't shower. She doesn't shower you either. You take care of my kids. Yeah. Well, she has to shower sometimes when she goes to the UN meeting. That's true. That's true. You know, Megan Fox and her look a lot alike, so I'm surprised that she doesn't scare me. It's because she doesn't have the intense snake demon eyes. That's probably what it is. Probably what it is. I actually, Megan Fox, I actually disliked her less because she was on New Girl. And I got to see her in a really dry comedic role, but uh-huh. I also kind of was mad because, no, no, she was fine on that show. It was interesting. She made me laugh. So yeah. Parasocial worked on that one in her favor. <laughs> Good work, because Megan. Because you were conditioned by the rest of the show 100%. to be softer. Right. Well, that show is uh, literally the Golden Girls, but with dudes and chick. Yeah. So... Yeah. And then, and then, uh, oh crap! What's Jess and what's her friend's name? I don't know. Oh no! I keep saying no. Isn't it like C C C C C? Yes, C C. Um, I was like, I haven't watched that show in years, and I just knew that it's C C. Yep. Um, but C C is kind of like Stan, where she's like, "Hey, it's me, C C." She's like pops over. I'm just a bald old man. I'm I mean, just a bald old man. <laughs> I'm here to date your friend. I feel like every show has the the story arc characters of the Golden Girls. Because mm-hmm. you have to have like opposite mm-hmm. characters that get along to play off of each other. Like I have this really great book at home uh, that you might like. It's 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 about it's it's a comic book writing book, but it's uh it's called writing. Uh, I think writing dynamic comics or something but it's by a guy who also writes novels and tv shows cool uh, his name's peter david um oh i've heard of him yeah um and he there's like a whole chapter on creating characters and it's like you you want your cast to be opposite from yeah. each other right so that they can they can clash yeah but like also like find a middle ground like he actually uses uh buffy as as his archetype for when he's uh, talking about it uh where, where he was like you know the reason that Cordelia went with Angel was because Angel's dark and broody and like he keeps things to himself and Angel's a social butterfly or Cordelia's a social butterfly right. that just says whatever's on her mind. So they're opposites that contrast, but they make good TV together. Right. Uh, oh, I like that. That's smart. Uh, Can I read that? Yeah, I'll have to bring it over sometime. Yes, please. It's one of my favorites. I would love that. It's one of my favorite books. Who are some of yours? Your parasocial people. Um I've got so many, like I don't Michael Jackson Mine are more like characters, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, obviously, you know, Buffy and Power Rangers and, mm-hmm. and Drag Race, uh, which is interesting because, like, actually a couple years ago, one of the drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race died. Oh, there was a, oh I remember that. Uh, it was season two. Her name was Sahara Davenport. Uh, and she's actually in a long-term relation with the, relationship with another drag queen on the show, Manila Luzon, mm-hmm. who was just on this last season of All Stars as well. Uh, but like it was just so heartbreaking because like they were like the super like they were the Brangelina of drag Aww. you know and then yeah. like suddenly she just died of liver failure that's yeah. sad bad it's I think it was sad. liver failure I think that's what it was but uh yeah but yeah um it was just very it was strange yeah um, but um I don't really know if I have anybody like I'm not super super attached with yeah now. I mean, obviously. Talk about your childhood, because like when you get older, it's like, 
it's less prevalent and you more so can detach yourself. But when you're a little kid, you kind of, they're like, oh, this is my friend. You yeah, know? well, I mean, I'm still like that. I like, too. you know, with Drag Race and like uh, The Good Place. Oh, my mm, God. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I'm just uh, like, these people are my friends. They're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to them with a Ouija board. Um, yeah. Um, I you know, if who... they'll put that on the show sometime. But anyway, continue. It'd be so cool. Uh, you know who? Like, I would really be upset about because she did mold a lot of my life mm. and like my ferocity. Yeah. And and uh, my brave bravery and stuff. Uh, and she's kind of a joke now. Yeah. But whatever. Uh, Madonna. Absolutely. You know, she was actually, she's probably my diva from, like, back in the day. Because, mm-hmm. uh, like, I remember when I was younger, uh, like, she was kind of my first real, uh, my first real idea that I could like boys mm-hmm. and it would be fine. Yeah. Uh, because I remember watching uh, one of her concerts on MTV and, like, you know, she had boys dancing together and, like, kissing and stuff. And my dad walked in and he was like, boys don't do that! And I was like... But, but you're I, like, Madonna told me they could. I know. <laughs> Are you Madonna, Dad? No. No, shut up, Dad. Uh, so, yeah. And plus, I mean, she's kind of been with me my whole life. Like, my uh, Papa Don't Preach came out when my mom oh. got pregnant. Yeah. And she was a teenager. And that was, like, her story. Oh. Uh, I was like, you know, she's keeping her baby. She's a teenager. She's, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Madonna was such a gay rights activist in the er- late 80s, early 90s. She was there for victims of AIDS. You know, mm-hmm. now she's... She's older and her music's not that great and she kind of tries too hard. I will say that she um, did come out with a couple really good songs, but the rest of the albums weren't as well, good. Well, within the last, there's a couple songs on her newer albums that I do like. Yeah. But like, she, it's just this persona of her trying so hard mm-hmm. to hold on. Yeah. Where it feels like, it feels like a performance where you have it's some. It's almost stifling. Yeah. Where you have somebody like Cher who's just like, I'm a Cher, bitch. And like, <laughs> I'll do what I want. You know, it feels okay from her, like it because it feels effortless from yeah. her. You know, because it's Cher. Cher has yeah. always had that kind of attitude where she's like, "I whatever, I do what I want." Whereas it feels like Madonna's holding on to something, right? Which I feel like it was interesting because I saw her on that James Corden car karaoke, car yeah. karaoke or whatever, um, and she was like, "You know, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. Most of the time, I stay indoors, and I'm." You know, I read books and stuff. I was like, why don't you have that be your persona now? Right. You know, like the fact that you have evolved and grown shows that you are a completed person. And the people that are stuck in this area where they feel hollow and they don't feel like they can be at home and just read a book, you know, maybe they would maybe they would strive to be something more. You know what I mean? Like she can she could do a lot of good with just being herself. Yeah. Which, that was a problem I always had, was, like, I would always strive to be some, like, pristine, smiley thing that was always under control with everything. And yeah. I've I've come to realize that, like, not only is that going to break you down, but other people aren't going to buy your bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like if she would just make music that she wants to make mm-hmm. rather than music that she thinks will sell well, right? it would be better. Mm-hmm. And, like, people wouldn't, like, laugh much at her because right. like i've said this time and time before it's my true like comparison like i feel like she's the living embodiment of grizabella from cats absolutely <laughs> she's oh 100 she's just aging cat who's singing about yes, what used to be i was a pop princess like i feel like you know she needs to have the career that lady gaga has now where lady gaga just kind of does whatever music she wants and it doesn't really right. matter like if it's going to be commercial success or not yeah. Uh, she just kind of does it. She's like, I'm going to make a jazz album now. And she's like, I'm a living Pinterest page. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's like, I'm on the deep end. I want to jump in. Far <laughs> from the shell on now. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm putting this, I love Lady Gaga. Don't get this twisted. Yeah, I'm a little monster, man. We, we're little monsters. We love her. But goodness, is she just regurgitating memes that she sees online and puts There's them out in speeches? There's people in a room. <laughs> she puts them out in speeches, and then everyone's like, she's so wise. She's so wise. It's just a Hallmark card. She's a Hallmark card. And I'm like, girl, just just be Lady Gaga. 
Just be Lady. Just be Stephanie. You don't even have to be Gaga. Remember when you Do wore you, meat? Do you, Boo? Do what? <laughs> Remember when she wore meat? Yeah. And it's it's one of those things where it's like you see all these people trying so hard. And it feels like she's trying really hard to be this character. You know, like mm -hmm. this all-wise encompassed character yeah. that survived bullying. And I was like, girl, I've, I've I feel been like, bullied. Yeah, I feel like her and Madonna have like the opposite mm -hmm. strengths. Whereas Lady Gaga makes whatever music she wants. Yep. She's like... She's portraying this like pristine, pristine character outside of her music. Yeah. Whereas when Madonna like is outside of her music, she's a normal person. But like when she is doing her music, she's just like, "I am a pop princess. I am Madonna, bitch." Right. But she's like seventy. <laughs> a caca sandwich. Do you remember that on MTV? <laughs> when like she had a fake British accent. Yeah. <laughs> remember when uh, Courtney Love threw tampons at her? I do remember this. Such a good time. And Madonna was like, "Great, she's gonna be in on our interview." <laughs> <laughs> like you could see it like she held it together pretty well like i was pretty proud of her but you could see it boiling under her skin i remember and i, I was remember like, watching that live as a child and yeah, like, what's too. going on <laughs> yeah, I, I picked up i was like someone's mad <laughs> someone's mad but i couldn't figure out which one was mad turns out both of them were mad but one of them was really drunk so um yeah it was awkward <laughs> super awkward super dupa um one of mine uh, one of my parasocial people is um, every member of NSYNC minus Lance. Oh, but Lance is gay. I love him. I do. But he didn't seem like he was necessary in NSYNC. He wasn't. And also, like, even though he's gay, I don't know if I want to claim him because he's one of, like, the bougie Hollywood gays now. Yeah, he's like, look at this wine. I mean, he's those women. He's the wine-drinking yeah. women. Like, he's like, I'm going to a circuit party with mm -hmm. Anderson Cooper. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm. He's like, let's me drink my red wine. This one you can definitely taste. That there was limestone nearby. <laughs> but yeah, Apparently, I don't. Really, he was like, st like out to in sync back when he they was. were touring. He was. Um, and he would sneak boys into the hotel, mm -hmm. and the boys would cover for him. Yeah, of course they would. Uh, Good friends. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an interview that Chris Kirkpatrick did where somebody said, "Well, what if one of the guys turned out to be gay?" And Chris said... <laughs> and they all turned to Lance? <laughs> no, he, no, it was just an interview it with It just Chris. feels like one of those things where, like, when you're in class and they start talking about gay issues and then everyone would turn to me. Remember mm -hmm. those? I do remember that. <laughs> and I would be like, Travis isn't the guru on this. Leave him alone. I remember one time, like, in theater class. I don't mm -hmm. know if you were in, in this particular class. I don't know. I was in musical theater once. <laughs> we were going, like, we, it was at the end of the school techie. year. We were preparing to go to the International Festival in Nebraska, uh -huh. uh, and Miss uh, our teacher, yeah, was starting to talk because <laughs> he knew that we were all rambunctious, hormonal teenagers. And he oh, was absolutely! Like, so he gave us a weird, awkward, safe sex talk. Uh, this happened for real, and uh, he started talking about gay <laughs> stuff, and then everyone was like, "Turned to me." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I am the gay." <laughs> Good Lord. It was the weirdest, like, most surreal experience. How uncomfortable. I mean, like, I didn't get laid, so, like, what? why were they worried? <laughs> yeah. How uncomfortable. Yeah, he never did that with us. Because we were the techies. We were the responsible ones. <laughs> He's like, get AIDS. <laughs> Just don't make it miss... Don't let it make you miss building things oh. for me. Well, he, we didn't get a chance to go mingle with people because we worked from like 5 a.m. to like 10 o'clock at night the entire time. We were very tired. Very tired. Um, really? Yes. Yes. Because maybe it was just a particular person, but like one of those times we went, like there were one or two techie girls that were always with me. Like, running around town. Really? They weren't supposed to be. <gasps> oh, I know who you're talking about. And we actually did question where these people were. She was with me, mm. getting smoothies and going shopping. She wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> Girl! Girl. But, um, very amused. Very amused. But, uh, and I, hold on. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We looked for her for, like, 25 minutes, and we even went back to her, her room to find her. She wasn't there? No. 
She was with me. That's okay. Still love you, girl. Um, if I if I thought about it, I would have done it too. Um, <laughs> actually, no. I was guilt stricken most of the time, so I was like, I'm going. Um, who who was I talking about? My para. In sync. Oh yeah, in sync. Uh, I we talked about this a little bit on the mask singer. Uh, I would watch, I had all the NSYNC videos. Oh, Joey is the bunny, by Joey the way. Joey is the bunny. I was correct. How could I not be correct? I knew Don't his voice. Don't lie to voice. me, Joey. Joey, you big fat liar. Fat one liar. Um, <laughs> Jenny was like, he's too scary to be Joey. Joey's fat. And I was, <laughs> I was like, girl, you are going to eat those words. And she did. And she gained 10 pounds. Um, cause she ate the words. She didn't get a vaccination. She didn't get a vaccination. She got, <laughs> she, she got it from Joey. <laughs> But um, but anyway, um, what was I saying? Joey. Oh yeah, Joey. I absolutely loved In Sync. Um, I had all of their DVDs. I had all the little books. I carried around pictures of them. Um, Chris Kirkpatrick was my honey man, and I am friends with him on the Facebook, and I have talked to him on several occasions, and I, st- st- he's still my honey man. In my heart, there's like this little child piece of me that pops up. This is why I didn't... I mentioned this. This is why I didn't go to the uh, thing when they went to Fandom Fest. Because I would have imploded. Because child me would have popped out. And I would have been like, oh, it's Kirk Patrick. So, but yeah. I would I would be sad if anything happened to them. And I mean, Joey Fatone is just such a likable guy. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just a genuine goof. Yeah. Genuine goof. Um, Joey's the one I would marry. Yeah. He's a sweetie. He's sweetie. He I'm, His daughter has autism. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you Jenny McCarthy gives him hell. Actually, apparently they're friends. they are friends. And he was on her podcast not that long ago, and I think they were talking about how his daughter had autism. Um, I don't I don't know if vaccines came up, but I'm sure it did because it's Jenny McCarthy. But, oh, my um, God. Um. We keep going on tangents, but like whatever. Like I don't care. We're, we're talking about our, we're you, talking about our celebrities. Uh, there was a podcast where uh, she did with Tara Reid, <laughs> and they hate each other. Oh what? Why was she on the show then? Oh my god, I don't know. Was she blowing her up with her love? But like they were like just shading each other the whole time, and Tara was like, "I have to go. Hope you still stay married." <laughs> like like they were like they were like just shading each other's marriages and stuff. I'll have to pull it up. But I remember like one of them says, "I um, good luck on your marriage." <laughs> Whoa. I want to listen to it. Yeah, what if they actually do get along, but they wanted to put that out? Like, it would be like if we just did an episode where we shaded each other. Like, nice hat, Travis. Where'd you get that? The hat store? <laughs> and then talk it, like Sandy from uh, Daria. <laughs> <laughs> the hat store? Um, I'm, not, I, I'm not a shader. I am terrible with it. Um... But I am a viper when you get me mad. But I'm bad at shade. I'm not. I'm not a shade thrower by any means. I'm good at shade. Talk, I don't like to do it. Talk about your hat. Like, how would you have done it? What? Shade your hat, man. Shade my hat. Shade it. Throw some shade at your hat. I mean, like it's from the hobo collection because I have some holes on the top of there it. There you go. I you really do. Give me some more. It. Give me some more. I mean, like, it's only because I'm covering up my bald-ass head that looks like mange. No, that's shading you. Stop it. Shade your hat. I can't shade my hat without shading myself, because the art of shade is to do it like a, like a mean comment to the person. Oh. See, if I was, like, on one of those things where you had to do, um, like, a roast, I would be Andy Samberg. <laughs> He's nice. Bam. Gotcha. Shady. <laughs> Oh man, roasted. Um, but yeah, In Sync is one of my para. Uh, the Beatles are some of my my parasocial people. Um, who else are my parasocial people? A lot of my parasocial people are already dead, so I have no problem. Right. I don't have to worry about them dying. Um, I think I have like a little parasocial relationship with just about. Anybody that was special to my childhood. So, like... Oh, yeah, me too. You know, the actors on the TV shows, mm-hmm. the, the musicians I listen to. Like, I still get sad when, like, I listen to, like, TLC. Yeah. Media, 
Oh, music. me too. Um, or like when I go back and watch like Clueless or something, I'm like, yeah. oh, Brittany Murphy's dead. Yeah. Robin Williams. That is a huge parasocial issue for lots of people. And I actually feel super bad about Will Smith for stepping into that role of the genie. Mm-hmm. It's like, that dude just wants to play the genie. You don't need to trash him because he's not Robin Williams. No one will be able to fill in Robin Williams' shoes. Yeah. But not, give him a go. I'm not like trashing Will Smith. I just don't think they need to remake those movies. They don't need to by any means. And if they do, like, just keep it a cartoon because, like, God... Like the live action kind of looks terrible. <laughs> How are they going to... They're going to... The Lion King is not going to be live action. I know they're like, live action. It's CGI. CGI. I hope it's just like... Like they're feeding lions peanut butter and just like... Mwah, 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 like the whole time. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> or like... Uh, what was it? Like Morgan Freeman reading the, the script. Yeah. The Lion King over like Discovery Channel. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I talked about. I think it just needs to be Morgan Freeman doing a documentary over and some lines. And then they end with a Beyonce song. Because oh, they, that's oh, all the people, oh, the singing lyrics. Oh, the singing All the people it's care Nala. about. It's Nala because, like, Simba dies or something. So then Nala's like, oh, the singing lyrics. And she's looking That's for, how it's going to be different. It's going to be the Lion Queen because <gasps> Simba yes. dies. And then it's just, it's just Beyonce Nala. Because she's Queen B. Get it, Beyonce. Get it. Get it. Yeah, actually, Will Smith might be one of my parasocials as well, because I watched him all the time as a kid, like Men in Black. He he has brought me hours upon hours of enjoyment. Mm-hmm. So I could I could see Fresh Prince. Yes, and West Philadelphia, born and raised. I don't remember the words. And, <laughs> and West Philadelphia, born and raised on a playground is where it's been most, most of my, my days. days. Chilling out, maxing out, relaxing all, cooling all, shooting some b-ball outside of school. What a couple of guys who was up and no good. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. She said, you better watch your auntie in Oakland, Oakland Bel Air. I whistled for a cab and when it came near, the license plate said fresh and there was dice in the mirror. If anything, I could say that this cab was rare and I thought, nah, forget it. You're home to Bel Air. Do you know how many places... Like, just have Bel Air in their name. Yeah. And every time, like, when I was younger, I would go to, it would be like, Bel Air grocery Travis, store. Travis, you cut the song off. And I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. I pull up to a house about seven or eight, and I yelled to the cab of your home, smell you later, look to my kingdom, I was finally there to sit on my throne as the Prince of Bel Air. Do, 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 do. Okay, is it over? Do, 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 I think do. there's like a whole, like, three more verses. <laughs> I'm just going to do the one that's on the on the actual commercial, not commercial, uh, the preview. No! The theme. theme song. The theme song. Well, as I was saying... <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird. Like, I had this, like, pent-up feeling that was happening in my chest because it wasn't done. And there was, like, two lines left, and I was like, oh, God. I know how you feel. It's, oh, it's like when it's been five minutes and I haven't gone, ah! I don't know, it's because, okay, it's because Trisha Paytas, YouTuber extraordinaire, did, like, a cover that says, better than Lady Gaga cover, and it's just her singing off-key in her kitchen in, like, like uh, Anna Nicole Smith outfit. Oh, And yeah. so now we just keep going, I'm on the deep end, I'm on the deep end. I don't but, actually know the words, but I assume that's what she said. Yeah. She, you can't see it, but she does this shimmy. She shimmies her boobs. She does a pretty Spears noise. She does, <laughs> oh, it gets me. It gets well, anyway, me so what much. I was saying was like, there's so many places like that just have Bel Air in their name. And like yeah. when I was a little kid, I'd be like, it would be like a Bel Air grocery store somewhere in Indiana. And be like, is this where the Fresh Prince is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally into it. Totally yeah. into it. Oh, somebody that's kind of like linked to uh, Will Smith, Tony Shalhoub. That would be one of my people that I would be very sad about. How's he linked? Where's he from? Where... Uh, he was on Men in Black. He he was the, oh. the gun store owner. Yeah. Yeah, he was an alien. Do you have any idea how much that thing... Is he in Galaxy Quest? Yes. Yeah, he's one of the he's aliens, so right? so good. No, no, he's one of the humans. Uh. He's one of the act the actors. Yeah. He's so cute. That's such a good movie. He's such a cutie. 
You that's who that would be another parasocial any action lady. Oh, action is a ladies parasocial are awesome. Relationship for me, so Sigourney yeah. Weaver. Mm-hmm. Uh, She's cool as ass. Yeah, Linda Hamilton. Um, Mila Jovovich, Jovovich, even Mila though people, Jovovich. even though some of you don't like the movies she's in and think she's a prostitute, I think she's amazing. She is. And uh, I love her. And also, Fifth Element is one of my favorite movies. It's such a good movie. I would be sad about Bruce Willis as well. I know. I, I still have kind of a crush on him. Oh, absolutely. That little yeah. bald, handsome man. Yeah. Hell, you bald guys. Stop uh, feeling Corbin bad about Dallas. being bald. Yeah. Fifth Element, him and Fifth Element, yes. Oh my. I really like uh, him. Also, Chris Tucker. <laughs> I, had a, I had a huge <laughs> crush on Chris Tucker. <laughs> when I was little, I was like, oh, who's this flamboyant also, uh, man? Also, the, the Blue Diva. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. The stones oh. are in me. And for some reason, Gary Oldman. <gasps> like. Gary Oldman in Dracula for me. <laughs> mm. I also really enjoy him as uh, Sirius Black because he looks really good with that hair. Yeah. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Mother, may I? How long have we been recording? I feel like we were just like... An hour and 28 minutes. I feel like we're just like, and another person. Yeah. And it's just going to go on forever. Yeah. But there's a lot of people. Yeah. And I mean, it's completely normal and acceptable for us to be like, I love all of these people. I don't know them. But man, do I love their work. And it makes me love them in, a, in, a, in an extension. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it helps that some of them are super cute. It does. And sometimes you, you do have the little fantasy for, like, like when you're going to bed and you're just like, I need to sleep, so I'm going to think about this whole pretend relationship yeah. with this person. Yeah. I do that every night. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I just make up, like, a new, like, fantasy ro- romance with somebody. <sighs> fictional or, hey, like, you, real. Hey, you or... really don't know <sighs> what, what'll happen at some point. Like, I think that I'm a witch, and I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. Because I will put it out in my head... That these things are going to happen yeah. and like good things are going to happen, and then it happens. So mm-hmm. um, I just want to put it out there. Uh, think positive, friends. I know because you know good things will come to you if you Sometimes put it out there. Things Sometimes bad things <laughs> when we on talk accident. About it. We talk around the podcast. Sometimes. I mean, we like Peter, there's been so many. Uh, we were just I don't we weren't talking about it on the podcast. We were talking about it when we were just sitting here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were talking about nine hundred two one zero. Yeah, Luke Perry just had a stroke, and we're like, "What did we do to him?" Um, well, it probably wasn't us. It was probably like a ham sandwich, but oh, still. No. Oh, wait, cheeseburger. wait, he might be a vegan, actually. He might be. But I absolutely loved him as Pike. Uh yeah, on the Buffy. OG the Buffy. OG Buffy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Aww. yeah. So there, you know, when I read that, I w- there was a little piece of me that was like, no, not Pike. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever have those celebrities where, like, when you see them on screen and you know that they have like emotional problems and you immediately feel it, mm-hmm. and then you want to cry for them? Yeah. I do that with Tori Spelling. Oh yeah. She always seems nervous. Yes. All the time. Yes. She didn't seem that bad on Masked Singer, though. Oh, no, she was. Was she? Oh, yeah. Well, when she was unmasked, she seemed like she was a little bit relieved. Yeah. She's like, I get Maybe it's just like she was like being claustrophobic. Yeah. Like, ah, finally. <laughs> How charming was it when Joey said claustrophobic? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got claustrophobic. And I was like, claustrophobic. I love him. I, I do. Would... I think out of all the boy band people, I would probably marry him. It's because he's so stinking out sweet. Out of anybody, like, ooh, I wouldn't marry Justin Timberlake. Mm-mm. He's he's a fuck boy. He's he is the definite. He would be like cheating on you. He would be. Uh, I don't think he does that to Jessica Biel. Because I, I think, I think she's stronger than him and she will is. kill him. She would kill him. Like she knows like jujitsu <laughs> and muscles. stuff. She is. She's a she would beast. Choke hold him. Also, I think I think he's like found his half. You know what I yeah. mean? Like. I don't know. Maybe back in the day he would have. Well, actually, I don't think so. I don't think he would have cheated because Britney Spears cheated on him. So. I don't know. He just seems like. Maybe like, you're picking up the atmosphere. That's he just around seems like, like that, that pretty boy that knows he's pretty and cool. And it's just like. Mm, I don't think he's mm, a cheater. Um, mm, maybe. I feel like JC is out of. I feel like JC is 
he thinks he's cooler than he is. Yeah. Like, I watched every season of America's Best Dance Crew. He thought he was the coolest judge. He's and not that cool. Little Mama and, and whoever the third judge was, because they rotated them every now yeah. and then, would always be like, shut up. Mm-hmm. Shut up, JC. Mm-hmm. Shut the hell up. Yeah. Yeah. So, he, he, that boy has an ego. Mm-hmm. And you can tell. You can tell. Yeah. But um, I don't know about Chris. I think he he seems a little nervous too, so I think that's why. Why I latch to him. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. But like Tori Spelling, she makes me cry. Like I used to watch her show all the time and I would just be like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I just want to hug you. And then I don't know, there's like this little I want to heal people that's inside of me. And I'm gonna be learning Reiki, so um I think that'll be good. That'll be good for me. Uh, so I can heal people and not deplete myself. But um, but Corey Feldman, uh, I used to be like that with Corey Feldman as well. I'm not so much anymore. Um, like I would see him and I would get sad. And I don't know if that's from me or if it's from him or maybe our joined experience yeah. of like the abuses or I something. I totally believe, like for, for a while I didn't know what to feel about him because yeah. like, you know, like everyone in Hollywood tried to paint him down to be like this crazy person. Mm-hmm. But, like, with everything coming out within the last year or so, like, I mean, I believe him. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I have I always believed him. And I think it's just, I think it's one of those things that when you're a survivor of things, you have this, like, instinct to believe. Yeah, you, know you what do. I mean? Because, like, I we've talked about this before, like, a couple, like, about a year or so ago when Melanie Martinez was, like, accused mm-hmm. of raping her friend. Right. And I was like, I don't know if I can support her anymore because I don't know if it really happened or not. Right. Um. Upon further investigation, I really think this person was actually just trying to exploit her right uh which is not something that i would assume of anybody i usually always believe the victim no matter what Mm -hmm. that's Um, the same here but it was it was really hard for me to like really kind of come to terms with it and be like Mm -hmm. yeah and again that kind of goes into that area Mm -hmm. of like having to separate them yeah from their work from from their art Mm -hmm. yeah definitely because i mean like there's some great there's some great movies that were made by awful people. Yes. Uh, like, Rosemary's Baby is, like, considered to be one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Roman Polanski is, like, a, a rapist. Yeah, of little girls. Or, like, uh, Woody Allen. Yeah. That guy is disgusting. Yeah, and people are just still like, oh, he's the genius. I'm wow. like, no, he's not. Or more recently, uh, uh, Brian Singer, mm-hmm. uh, who did Bohemian Rhapsody in most of the X-Men movies. Um like he's I'm really glad that Mitch is not up here when you just mentioned <laughs> Mitch is so passionate about his dislike of that movie. Yes. Well, it's because he's such a hardcore Freddie Mercury That's fan. That's his parasocial. It is his parasocial. Like Freddie Mercury is his icon. Yeah. So that's that is his and he did not appreciate how the movie portrayed any of it. So. Yeah. So yeah, it was very hollow, and I agree with them. It was shallow. It was shallow. <laughs> shallow. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Both of them are Oscar winners now. Yes, they are. Whether or not it's deserved. Whether or not it's shallow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like we're just going to keep thinking shallow. I'm we're fine with it. it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> oh, can we get sued if it's on a podcast? I don't we're think so. Badly? Well, we're only doing like five seconds of it. If you go past five seconds and you got to play royalties, you got to give them fees. We're only doing a couple seconds. Oh, no. The Peter Tork one in the beginning. Eh. It's fine. It's fine. We're small beans. We are small beans. We'll be fine. We'll Worst be they fine. can do is be like, hey, take that off. We'll be like, okay. We'll be like, Fine. To blaze. Sorry, that made me think of it. Um, Carol Kane is another one of mine. Love that woman. Freaking love, love Carol Kane. I do. Ah, help me, Lord, I'm wacko. That when she was on Taxi, like I just. I, I liked when she loved was her. a gangster at the end of Kimmy Schmidt. Oh, that's good too. That's very good. Uh, very, very good. I. I don't understand why. Like, I love that show so much, but like, whenever I try to quote it, it's just like a void. I'm just like, what are the quotes? It brought me joy, but I can't remember what she said. It makes me sad because I want to do an impersonation of her. All I can remember is her talking about the banana boys because all the other fruits were taken. I remember when she was like a teenager and she did the original When a Stranger Called. No, all the other colors were taken. 
I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the Kimmy Schmidt quote. Continue. No, I was just talking about when she was a teenager and she had won a Stranger Calls in the 70s. She had those big eyes. Like, she still does, but, mm-hmm. like, she was young then. He was like, have you checked the children? She's like, no. <laughs> I, sh- I would check them. <laughs> girl. Love that girl. Uh, Bill Murray. I love Bill Murray. Although he's mean to ladies, but... Is he? Yeah. Well, you have the chance to find out for yourself because he comes to Louisville. I've I have already met him, and he spanked me with a program. Did I you? was 16 years old, Bill Murray. Okay. You'd be touching my butt when I was 16. Yeah. Mm, it was funny, though. I laughed about it. Okay. So it wasn't... I mean, as long as you don't have bad feelings It wasn't about bad it. feelings. Um, it, he was... It was uh, at a golf tournament, and uh, a bunch of people were there. Yeah. So there was nothing sexual about it. It was more so of, he's just hitting me with things. Because he... F- the first four times, he hit me in the back of the head with a book. And then he hit me on the butt with it. And I said, I'm going to sue you! And it was a great moment for me. Isn't it weird when you, like, meet celebrities and they do stuff like that? Yeah. To be like... I'm I'm just like you. I'm so I'm cute. A celebrity. Look at me. I'm a I'm a person, but like they they like they feel like they can kind of like cross the boundaries oh, yes. a little bit. Oh yes, because they are celebrities, mm-hmm. but they are trying so desperately to be like I'm just normal. But like mm-hmm. they touch you. And, like, yeah. Well, there. Well, you know my one guy that I met that was like I'm gonna feel up your butt, and I was like, excuse was me. This yeah. That guy. Oh no, from- yeah. Oh yeah. Like yeah, when when I was bowling, he mm. started talking about God in my ear, but like in a creepy way. No, like, no, 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 not him, not oh, him. Wait. Oh, other guy. Other guy. This is on a movie set. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I think just because you're a celebrity, you can touch people's butts. No. People are like, "Tell me the tea. Name this mm-hmm. person." I'm like, "No." I elbowed him right in the stomach. I mean, you can always ask us in private, I guess. Yeah, you can ask us in private, but I won't put the name out in public because I don't, I don't need that kind of attention. <laughs> yes. Um, probably still wouldn't even tell you in private, so just don't worry about it. I I'm mean, fine. Some of it you could figure out. You could just be like, oh, what did they do? What has she been doing in her life? Yeah, but don't worry about it. I'm fine. Uh, I took care of it. I got after the person. I'm a big girl. Um... And I, th- I think they learned their lesson because uh, they need to know that it's not cool. Well, and they didn't do it anymore. They did not do it anymore. Um, did call me a bitch afterwards, but I was fine with that. <laughs> you know what? Bitch means being in total control of herself. That's right. And that is what you were doing. Mm-hmm. Oh. Do we have anything else to talk about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've been like, and this person. I love this person. Um, there was something that we wanted to, that, something else we wanted to talk about. Hold on, I have it written down. I have it written down, and we'll check. Make sure that we we dotted all our 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 eyes, and we crossed all the T's. I almost said we dotted our P's and we crossed our Q's, and I was like. Hmm. Well, cues have the little. Thing, yeah, I felt better about that one. I didn't, I didn't feel it. great about the other one. I just wrote this down, uh, uh, and this is actually something true for me. Um, that two years ago, whenever I broke my back and I was like disease bedridden kind of a human for like a year, um, the only thing that actually gave me any amount of enjoyment was watching movies and TV. Yeah, and uh, I got very attached to. Um, you know, different things. And also, I would turn on, like, old movies and things that I knew made me feel good. Mm-hmm. And I related it with that person, you know, those actors in it. So, like, they were my medicine. Like, if it weren't for those guys, I, I nobody came and visited me. You know, I was by myself. So it was one of those things where, like, that was my world, you know. And I can only imagine, like, the people that are like that all the time. Like, 24-7, can't go anywhere, can't do anything, can't move. How important these celebrities are, you know? They are. And it just also, it makes me think about, like, celebrities that might not understand that. Mm-hmm. They kind of take it for granted. Christy that are kind Swanson. Of, 
<laughs> I'm going oh. ahead. I'm dropping it, girl. Oh, she gave off some negative vibes. Mm. We ran into her at one of the cons we mm-hmm. went to. Did not want to be there. Yes. Also, like, if you browse her Twitter, she has some really extremist beliefs that make me uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, You know, but this is not a political podcast. But, I mean, you can review her Twitter at your leisure. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, she's... Uh, I was actually going to mention that earlier when mm-hmm. you were talking about Luke Perry, but then I was like, eh. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, is... She does not want to be associated with Buffy whatsoever because her Buffy was a cult classic. People don't really... She didn't gain anything from it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, like, she... But she did. She did. I mean, she, she basically helped create the character. Right. She actually, I feel like, was one of the best actors in the movie. Like, mm-hmm. she really actually did sell the movie. Absolutely. Um, you know... She put her heart into it, I think. At, I mean, at least at the time. Right. Uh, where as she was acting mm-hmm. opposite of, was it, is it Donald Sutherland? Mm-hmm. Uh, who hated the movie. Right. Uh, he hated it while he was filming it. Mm-hmm. He hated it so much that he was an asshole to, to little 20-year-old Joss Whedon at the time. You know what? She probably remembers that as well. Yeah. You know, all the negativity on the set. So she probably was uncomfortable yeah. even filming. So... I don't know. I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense. But, you know, don't be mean to the fans or kind of, you know, push to the side the fans of Buffy because you are part of that world. Yeah. You know, you're part of that world, girl. We you appreciated know, you I for it. I actually really like the movie. I do, too. I love it. Um, I love it. I actually saw that way before I saw I the did. TV show. And I was like, this is I amazing. I remember when I was a kid. Before the TV show came out, mm-hmm. I read the there was a press release about you know, they're making a Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV yeah. show. I was super excited about it. I was like, I remember the movie. I really liked it. Yeah, absolutely. That's the same here. Same here. Yeah, my family, uh, we watched, we would just they get like cravings to watch it and we would watch it all the time. It was good. It was good. It was fun, you know? So, you know, appreciate your work. You did a good job and you made a lot of people happy. So yeah, don't try and don't try and push out Buffy just because it wasn't groundbreaking for you. But I think there's a lot of celebrities that don't understand that. Yeah. That people that they are important to people. Mm-hmm. Like they are important to people's like development. Catherine Zeta Jones is one of them. <laughs> Personal experience there. Just Yeah. Yeah. Um She didn't do it to me, but I, I witnessed things. <laughs> you witness her screaming at people. Yeah. She just seems like that anyway. I remember, well, she's bipolar. I remember watching an interview with her once. Where she was like bragging about, oh, yes, darling, I wash my hair with beer. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay. I so she like, puts yeast poop all over her hair? Yeah, and it Gross. makes it shiny. Gross. Um, But yeah, like I feel like a lot of, there are a lot of actors and Celebrities that are super entitled. Mm-hmm. One thing that started happening recently uh, with, again, we're going back to Drag Race, the rise of that show. Yeah. Is a, lot, a lot of the newer queens on the show are getting super cocky oh, and like demanding yes. a lot of money like right off the bat and like being rude to fans. What? Uh, and like some of the older queens and some of the hosts are just like, hey, um, you were fans at one time too. Right. Uh, you're not. You're not hot shit. You're not like. This le- you're 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 a reality show star, and mm-hmm. these people like you, so they're gonna make or break your career. You need to stop being assholes. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's something that a lot of celebrities need to know. Yeah, that if you are assholes to your fans, that's gonna get around, and right. that's gonna be what they see you as. That's gonna be your parasocial relationship with them. Yeah. That you are an asshole, and that will lose you traction quickly. Yeah. I'm not saying that like you should. Be always at the mercy of your fans. Definitely set your boundaries. Be like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm having dinner with my family right now. Right. Please, no pictures. Like, that's acceptable. That's right. fine. But also, like, remember these people, like, you mean something to, to them. Yeah. Um, I think another example um, in, in recent years that that has happened to quite publicly mm-hmm. uh, was Catherine Heigl from, um, she did Grey's Anatomy mm-hmm. for several years. She got famous off that show. And then she did uh, that one movie, Black Born, Knocked Up. Yes. Um, and she got super famous off of that. And suddenly she was like, oh, yes, I'm at the top of the world. And, like, mm-hmm. she started acting like a bitch to everybody. Right. She told 
people that she hated her role mm-hmm. in Knocked Up because she thought it was misogynistic or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, she was nominated for an Emmy for Grey's Anatomy, and she pulled out her nomination because she said that the writing was not up to her standard. Mm-hmm. And then so suddenly all of the creators that she was working with was like, I don't want to work with her. Why would they? Yeah. All they're doing is just dogging their stuff, you know? Yeah. And it, it is a privilege for her to be able to do that kind right. of job, you mm-hmm. know? And she ruined it. Her, her career has not been the same since. No. She's been doing straight to DVD rom coms mm-hmm. and TV shows that get canceled within a couple episodes. Right. I guess this just goes to show you that, you know, even if they're fans and you don't know them, parasocial is important because they make or break your career. They do. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, we're small in this podcast right now, but I do go out of my way to be nice to people. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm I'm never going to be like an asshole unless you're like harassing me, but then like, again. If you're harassing, you kind of got it coming. Yeah. A little different. A little different. Yeah. But um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, and this will be probably one of the last things that we talk about, um, something that I thought was really interesting. Um, hold on, I'm going to wait till Travis gets his Twizzler. I just, I've almost eaten this whole bag because I'm just like... <laughs> like I love Twizzlers. It's like a giant family. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You love what you love and eat them Twizzlers, baby. These are, it, they're like the Chinese, Little they're like the Chinese food of candy, like, because you eat it, it's like air. Yeah. And then, like, you're still hungry, but then you're just like, but I have, like, this wad of wax in my stomach. <laughs> I wonder what it does to poop. No. <laughs> I get so many questions. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> waxy doo doo. Um, oh, but something that was very interesting to me, because um, now you know we talked a little bit about how social media has kind of brought people who aren't even celebrities into the limelight. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, on social media, the more followers you have, psychologically, people will think you are more trustworthy. Yeah, I don't buy that. <laughs> I don't I I personally do not buy it but for some reason you know someone seeing that oh they have like a million something followers there's something to that and I started doing a bunch of research on I I'm new to Instagram I'm not great with it yet but I'm figuring it out um and it's interesting that you have to have a set look as to what you post on your social media or you're going to confuse your quote unquote fans. Yeah. Isn't that weird? You have to have a certain, like you Aesthetic. have to keep up an expectation so people know what they're coming for. Right. Otherwise they won't like, that's why I had to separate my Instagram accounts to like my personal account and my art account and all mm-hmm. that because people don't respond well if you have this mixed bag. Plus it was also kind of for me cause it was kind of like looking cluttered on my wall anyway. I was right. Like, Ugh. Uh, it was, I was doing the Marie Kondo thing. Just not spark joy There's anymore. No joy. So I, I separated them. But like, yeah, that's absolutely true. People yeah. want one thing from you and they don't want anything else. Right. And that's what you have to do. But like, I don't I don't believe the whole they're more trustworthy thing because mm-hmm. most of the time people with that many followers um, have bought those followers absolutely. or they use bots to get followers, mm-hmm. uh, which means they're willing to lie, cheat, and exploit things exactly. to get status or clout Mm -hmm. which i don't like unless it's somebody that is like an actual person that i can follow their career right i really don't trust them oh even then like i don't know them so it's like that girl that was on um dancing with the stars this last time i don't remember what her name was but she was an instagram star and it's like why why is she on here yeah (laughs) you know and then she created a fake relationship with alan the guy that she was dancing with like and you could tell how hokey it was, and you could tell that Alan wasn't really into it, but mm-hmm. he was like, the cameras are on me. If I tell her no, we're going to get voted off. You know what I'm <laughs> this saying? reminds me. I keep going back to Drag like, Race. He I'm was, sorry. He was like <laughs> being keep, held hostage. I keep going back to Drag Race. I'm sorry, but I'm obsessed with the show. And that's my it's parasocial. It's parasocial. Um, but like, it reminds me, there's this quote... Um, one of the queens that competed on the show, because mm-hmm. RuPaul is kind of the same way. She turns it on, and then she turns it off. Absolutely. So there was a quote from one of the, the queens that was on the show. She was in an interview. She was, like, uh, talking to RuPaul backstage, trying to tell her, you know, how much of an inspiration she was. And RuPaul leaned over to her, and she was like, nothing you say matters unless that camera is rolling. <laughs> and I was like, 
man. And then she was like, and then from that point on, I checked out of the competition because like I knew everything was fake. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, wow. Yep. That's kind of heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> RuPaul has been in the business long enough to know what matters on screen. I know, but you like know? going back to what we were saying, uh, yes. like like she should know better cuz mm-hmm. like I I've, I've been that watching... will get around cuz yeah. social media everybody's connected now. But like I've been watching cuz like there you go to YouTube, you can watch videos of her when she was like young, when she was like a teenager mm-hmm. in New York trying to make it, trying to be famous. Yeah. And like she was struggling. Right. And like she came from this place that we all do, but like it's like she's been up there for so long, she's kind of forgotten exactly. how to act. Exactly. Bad. And it's like you're talking about crystals and healing things. Maybe you should. <laughs> maybe... maybe you should have called the ambulance mm-hmm. for that guy drowning. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I just put the phone down, and and then I, I I would let fate handle it. So rude. <laughs> I think that's when you should be like, oh, all right. I see you're no longer even relatable in that situation. Nope. It was. Uh, it's kind of like Ellen. Somebody was somebody asked her her new uh, Netflix. I don't know what you would call it. Her Netflix special comedy special is called Relatable. Yeah. And uh, the reason she chose to have it be called that is because her old comedy was all about being down and out and like, you know, always striving and trying at least. But all the crap that would happen to her was very dry. And then some guy was like, so you're going to do a comedy special. Are you sure you're still going to be Relatable? Because she's kind of had so much um, success with her talk show and all that. But that woman has gone through the ringer. She got fired for being gay from her talk hit show. But I I can see why. Because, like, she does have moments where she's relatable and she's like, oh. Mm -hmm. I think there's this little part of me that thinks she's sadistic. Because she always does these things where she scares people. Well, yeah. Also, but you could, like, if you watch her interviewing people that she doesn't like, uh-huh. you can see it on her face. Like, oh, I yeah. want to murder them. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I get real uncomfortable. I it's do, like, too. She wants to kill them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mitch and I, we have this thing. We watched that show where, like, it's that new game show where you have to run around this course to get through anything yeah. that she's hosting. And, oh, my gosh, like, she's sitting there just, like, enjoying every little piece of them being in pain, trying to get through something. And I'm like, oh, good Lord, girl. Good Lord. She has Portia tied up to her bed at home. You know she does. (laughs) You know she does. Yeah. That's why Portia's so quiet now. She's been taught to be quiet. (laughs) Ellen, I'm on to you. Ellen's kinky sex dungeon. You know she's, you know, you know it. I always you think, think she dances into her sex dungeon with uh-huh. like her little leather hat yep. on. She's like, you ready? You ready, Portia? <laughs> <laughs> and she's wearing her white sneakers. <laughs> yeah, her she, black leather from black head to toe. Black leather head to toe, but white, then white sneakers. sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> that, the thing I was humming was uh, Seagulls by uh, Bad Lip Reading. Thank you. But anyway... So, um, guys, this podcast was all over the place. It was, but it was fun. But it was super fun, and I'm fine with it, because we've been doing a lot of serious podcasts We get to talk about, like, our relationships with celebrities, mm-hmm. and our sadness when they die, and our yeah. kind of favorite shows. And, Peter I mean, Tork, I mourn you, buddy. I well, know. You, you're not going to hear this. Well, you know, he could. I, it depends on your belief. I personally believe that, you know, one, when you pass on, you're still around, you're just kind of this like free flowing energy mm-hmm. and you you just feel happy and peaceful and you just get to go visit wherever you want. Mm-hmm. That's what He's I He's a believe. big fan of the Nerdy 30. He loves us. Love loves us. Yeah, well, I mean like I'm sure like since he's died he he's He's highly a, aware of everything. He's got a now. connection. Like maybe maybe like when you die like you get like Janet type senses. Oh, I think you do. Because like, I oh. feel like I feel like when you die you kind of get that because they say that you're you know, kind of like these little godlike creatures. And I yeah. feel like when you pass on, your energy kind of opens up and all the things that distracted you from the universe don't distract you anymore. You're actually just part of it. Yeah. So I feel like you're kind of like this all encompassing knowledge after that where you're like, okay, well, everything's cool. So like all that, all that stuff I was worried about was not necessary. Yeah. So like, I mean, I'm sure he's listened to every episode of the nerdy thirties within 30 seconds, <laughs> which is awesome. And I'm like, totally I really into like it. the one about Wolverine and Rogue having sex. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the one. <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah. But um 
But guys, if you like this podcast and you want to hear more of it, check out our stuff. Go to our Facebook page, mm-hmm. our Twitters, which we don't usually use, but it's linked to our other stuff. It's linked to our Facebook, so yeah. it's always updated when our Facebook's updated. Right, so you're, you'll technically get our updates. Um, our Instagram, where we like to put stupid photos up. Uh, I put some art up <laughs> of oh, us. Oh, it is so good. He did such a good we job. We might be selling T-shirts or phone cases or something with it on it. It's so it's stinking cute. Um, it's cute. Also, you know, we work really hard on the podcast. We do. So if you would mind uh, giving us, you know, a dollar or two you'll, on our Patreon, we'll be putting content up. We have an idea of doing, uh, we've mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, doing movie commentary tracks. Yes. As bonus episodes. Um, we're kind of throwing it around the idea of maybe doing like a Spider-Man month where yeah. we give you a preview of what we're going to be doing. And then everything after that is going to be Patreon exclusive. Yeah. It's going to be a fun time. You just listen to us and listen and watch a movie at the same time yeah. and listen to us cackle. It's going to be great. That'll be fun. It's going to be great. Um, but I mean, even if you don't want to do that, like, I mean, give us a, a dollar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it only costs us $15 a month to yeah. keep the podcast up. You know, so if you can... You know, give a dollar. If 15 of you gave us a dollar, we got it for the month. Yeah. And, like, right now, uh, I mean, maybe if we get successful with it, we'll we'll entertain the idea of doing uh, tiers for more money. But right now, everything's a dollar. So, like, if, right. if you give us a dollar, you'll be get whatever we put on the Patreon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you gotta give us some dollars so that we'll put stuff on the Patreon, because yeah. otherwise it's just like, what are we doing? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but we do work hard on the podcast. We, d- we work extremely hard on the podcast. Um... Also, do we still have the sponsorship? Yes, we are sponsored by. Uh, well, you're gonna. Are you gonna put the? Thing? Yeah, I'll put the commercial on. No, we're sponsored. Nerdy yeah. thirty ten. <laughs> Infinite CBD. Nerdy thirty ten. Get yourself ten percent off all that goodness. Mm. Um. But all right, guys. Uh. Thanks for listening. Uh. Bye. Let us know who you have a parasocial relationship or with. or a paranormal one or a paranormal one. Oh, people actually do that as well. They do. That woman, there was a woman in Scotland that married a ghost. There was a woman that married her zombie doll. Exactly. Oh, it was creepy too. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, bye. She's like Tina on the on on the 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 Bob's Burgers. Oh, it's so funny. You need to watch it. But anyway, bye guys. <laughs> that was-